OK, well, the weather tonight is absolutely magnificent. It's a beautiful night for football. There you see it, fine and warm. Current temperature, 28 degrees. That's the first game out of the way. The second game should be a very, very interesting one between the Dogs and the Double Blues. Of course, the Double Blues, like West Adelaide, showing uh, a lot of new players tonight. But there's the, the Bulldog lineup now. And we do believe that there will be a number of changes to that particular side. Craig is playing in the middle, we do know, with McAdam and Swirt. That centre line is OK. At centre half forward, we have Ingerson, man to make it at full forward. And a pretty good looking side. And they tell me this O'Sullivan, the boy from Western Australia, Kim, who will play at centre half back, is a very good player. Yes, he's a former East Fremantle player, and he has yep. represented WA on a number of occasions. So his credentials are pretty good. And also the young lad in the forward pocket, it's been said a hundred times, he's the John Platten lookalike, Sadi Ghazi. He was born in Lebanon. He won the VFA Best and Ferris medal last year. Yeah, he'll start so on the bench. He... The first rival will be Hockey tonight. Well, Eddie Hawking's uh, pre-season work's been very good, apparently, but uh, still, when uh, little uh, Ghazi gets onto the ground, he'll be well worth watching. And there you see the double blues, and the main change to the double blues side is the fact that Lennon, who uh, has made his name in defence or up forward, will start in the middle tonight. So that's a big change for Lennon. Uh, we'll have uh, Sutterby on the half-forward flank. So a number of changes there. But this young Bartlett, of course, uh, was a former under-19 player for the Double Blues. He'll start at full forward. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to have a look at him because obviously he's filling in the shoes of uh, Ian Wilmot. But I'm a big rap for Bruce Lennon. Whether it's at centre, yeah. time will tell, but he's a very talented player. Well, Graham Campbell, how do you see the second game between the Dogs and the Double Blues? Well, Ken, you've got to pick Central District, don't you? Although I must admit, uh, picking winners in this pre-season competition is fraught with danger. Who would have thought West Adelaide would get within a kick of the bays? I didn't, certainly. Uh, nobody did, I think, here tonight, but they did that. And Sturt may have something to offer, but I think Central by, uh, let's say, one to ten, shall we, Ken? And I, and, <laughs> and I think, Graham, also it's interesting to note that uh, the Dogs will try Hocking as their number one rover uh, tonight, so uh, obviously he's been burning on the tracks. Well, Ken, I do know that Neil Curley said he has been sensational in his pre-season work. Eddie Hocking deserves a full game. Glad to see him out there. The bouncing ball, I call him. The bouncing ball. OK, thanks, Graham. It should be an exciting game. Kim, the uh, second one, who are you going for? I'm tipping the dogs, but I expect Sturt to serve it right up to them. And uh, I think the, the Blues will be one of the big improvers this season. OK, let's now take you to your commentator. Of course, joining yourself and at myself. In fact, we'll go to Ian down in a few moments' time. But uh, first of all, of course, uh, Kim... Uh, yeah. Just, just looking Perhaps at... if he could not get quite so close to me, Ken. I know we've made friends since last year, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> well, I'm not to get comfortable. We'll go to Ke we'll turn down in a few moments' time, but, uh, of course, just talking about the second game, it's a big challenge for Kevin Higgins. It is, and uh, he's conducted himself certainly, well, extremely yeah. well in, uh, in all inter interviews, whether it be with the, uh, the print media or in television, radio, whatever. He seems to be a very sensible type of man, and uh, I think his approach is very professional. The other good news for uh, Sturt supporters is the fact that John Painter's here for another season. At one stage, it did look like he'd be lost to the Sturt football cause. Yeah, but uh, the more you talk to the Sturt supporters, Kim, they believe that they've recruited pretty well. Some of the players that Kevin Higgins has, in fact, brought from Geelong are very good players, and uh, they believe, rightly wrong of the step will have a far better year than, uh, than you and I and a lot of people think. Well, I, I think that they will improve. It's just, uh, as I said, time will tell actually how uh, much they will improve. We'll just try and see if we can pick out a few of the players there. And there are a lot of new players. Number 16 is Darren Bauer. He's another one of the new brigade. Well, and look, there's a the number bench. 24 there, and uh, that's a pretty famous to be w number to be wearing. Well, that's that's actually David I tonight. He's changed his number. So uh, he's number 24, and of course that was worn so magnificently by the uh, by Rick Davies there. What their, a contrast. Uh, David I wore 35 last year. He's about uh, three foot, and Rick Davies was <laughs> plenty. <laughs> <laughs> but that happens every year, doesn't it? Players like to change their numbers for whatever reasons and uh, it causes us a few problems from time to time, but we certainly pick that up throughout the season. And there's that young leg, Sadi Ghazi, on the left-hand side. The Johnny Platten look alike, old son. Yes, time. his hair's a little bit lighter than John Platten, but uh, you can see why. And I think the conk's even pretty similar. Have a look at that. <laughs> Actually, he must be a fairly useful player because he won the, uh, the VFA medal last year for the best and, uh, and fairest player. Yeah. So, obviously, he's a young lad with, uh, with talent. He'll start on the bench tonight and... Uh, uh, it'll be Hocking and Chapman that'll rove uh, for the Bulldogs. Of course, the big key to the Bulldogs uh, also, uh, Kim, is their, is their rucking division. I'll be keen to see how... We know how much Grant Coffey improved last year, but I'll be keen to see how, uh, how he continues the good work on uh, this year. Yeah, well, the best thing about Grant Coffey last year with his uh, marking around the ground, he's got a good leap, but uh, he tended uh, to be worn down in games by yep. people with superior height last year. He would have gained an enormous amount of experience from that, and he'll certainly be improved by it, and I expect him to perform quite adequately tonight. OK, we're well, joining uh, your Australian Kim Dillon in the commentary box is Ian Day. Thanks, KG. Yes, the umpires for this evening, Mark Mackey and Mark Barnett, who's got the ball at the moment, and... Uh, Brett Leanett will take the first guard ruck for Sturt and coming against him will be Grant Coffey. It's a perfect night for football 
it's got cooler for the players a crowd of about 10 15,000 people siren sounds and the game between central and sturt in the foundation cup is underway top team gets thirty thousand dollars for a win at the end of foundation cup coffee gets the tap back quickly it goes in hard macadam against the tide can't pick the ball up and the umpire immediately finds a free. It's going the way of Gilbert McAdam. He gives a chance to Coffey. The dog's into attack. Left foot's one up to the half forward line. Big leap over the top there. Can't get it out. Players going hard for the ball, and you'll find the umpire will come and ball it up on the half forward line for Central Districts. They are kicking towards the lake end. In the first game, it was the scoring end. You don't know why, because there's not a great deal of breeze. The ball is farmed out. Here's a chance for Sturt to clear it through. Richter couldn't. Lenat gets it out. Now Field will get a chance to read. Off the half-back line. Drives towards half-forward line. Not quite. Working the ball is McGowan. Flicks it back. Russell. He gets edged out of it. Pushed in now by O'Keefe. In towards the half-forward line. But the ball is fumbled out of play in the right full forward pocket and Sturt is in attack. We've had one minute of the opening term of the late game here between the Dogs and the Double Blues. The ball goes towards the back of the pack. No one contested the actual throw in. But the free kick has gone the way of Mark O'Keefe. Would take his best kick and that certainly wasn't his best kick. It went straight to Sullivan. Sullivan recovers well, gets good penetration, but his accuracy is not all that flash either. And the ball goes to Kimmy Russell. The handball over to Whittlesey, the captain. Good penetrating kick. Players set themselves. Coffee, the destroyer from behind. The handball goes out towards Radbone. He's a freak around goals, this bloke. Oh, and have a look at that for a kick. What a way to open the game. Fantastic performance there by Sturt to open up the way they did in young Rad Radbone. He, was, uh, he showed some excellent form last year, and if he can continue that good form into season 19-90, then the Double Blues are going to be well served by this young man. He's, he's quick and very accurate in front of goals, and there's an example of the good work. The Blues off to a good start, but the Dogs go into attack up towards the half-forward line. Rudy can't get it. Tackles on hard. Working hard for the ball is Richter. Over the top there is Minchington, or is it not? It is Rudy Mann to make up. Number 15 on the screen is big Jim Llewellyn from Benalla. Umpire puts it down. Umpire Mark Mackey puts it down in the right full forward pocket. In comes Leanett. Goes in high. Can't get the ball out. Searching for it there is Radbone. But once again, it's Rudy Mandemaker over the top 33. Number four is Chaplin. And, of course, Kevin Higgins, his first coaching stint in South Australia. And that's a pretty familiar coaching pose. Deep in thought. The ball pushed out wide. Players dive on top in desperation. Unable to work the play through. And, Ken, it'll be interesting to have a look at a lot of the new boys here for both sides. We've always mentioned, already mentioned O'Sullivan in the pre-match chat. The number of these new players for Sturt, who were certainly unknown to South Australian football supporters, is there as a push in the back there, and the free kick will go the way of McCarthy. Now, he's a man we've seen before. Yes, Kim, in fact, it's almost a new look Sturt side, and I'll be keen to see how they go in season 1990. Up they go towards uh, Gurdham. He can't take the mark off hands, read by Field, but his handball goes out of play. It's a beautiful night here at Football Park. A good crowd watching this encounter. And a big challenge for everybody concerned with the Sturt Football Club. Let's hope they can uh, rise to that challenge. Leonard, Ingerson, you know, with his hands to the football. It's scrambly stuff at the moment. Players can't get possession of the football. The bottom of the pack, Hocking working hard. But finally, the umpire again will call for a bounce down. It's Sturt, one straight goal, four minutes into the first term. The Dogs yet to get onto the scoreboard. Krieg, starting in the middle of the night for the Dogs, the bounce. Leonard again with his hands to the football. Taken by the Dogs up towards centre-half forward. It goes. Coming out of this occasion is Williams over the top. A good handball. Finds McGowan. Sturt now working the ball out of defence. Up towards half forward. It goes in front here. Should be a good mark. I think taken by Pyman. Number 54. He plays on quickly for the Dogs. In towards the centre of the ground. 
Gurdham to send the dogs into attack. Here's a chance. Hocking needs a runner. Unloads the ball to McAdam. Couldn't one grab it. Circles the pack now. Hooks around the corner towards the half forward line. Giving a chance out there to Coffey. And he's got it at 45 to 50 metres out from goal. Now, Coffey's normally a good kick, but he doesn't want it. He's going for the short pass. Man to maker. Possibly upset his own player then. who could have taken the easy mark. Scotty Lee playing in the forward division, which is unusual. Normally a back pocket player. But he would have taken a simple chest mark. Man to maker couldn't hold on to it. And, of course, the dogs register a point. And I think you'll find the umpire is going to whistle the ball back because the full back kicked off before the goal umpire had finished waving the flag. Umpire Mark Mackey. Take two for Darren Williams. Not a lot of movement across his half-back line. He surveys the options. Eventually a lead by Leonard. It's put out in that direction. Leonard has to sit underneath it. Coffee came from behind. Radbone picks up the crumbs. He punches the ball forward. But it's the dogs back into attack. Mandamaker from behind. Big leap. One grab. Two grab. Dropped it. Play on the call. Good umpiring. Eddie Hocking. Snapshot. Couldn't make the most of that. Richter in there. The Sturt defence are under enormous pressure. Richter once more. He always gives 100%. McCarthy in there. So too Radbone. Scott Lee taps it back. McGowan with a quick handle. Out to the skipper in Whittlesea. And the Blues are temporarily out of trouble. Out towards centre wing. A chance for field. Keeps the ball in play. And finally is, is harassed out of play. And the ball out of play at centre wing. Out of side. It's Sturt one goal. The Dogs one point. Six minutes into the first quarter. Two young men of South Australian football, Coffee and Leonard. Coffee over the top. Going to break through there. Scrambly football at the moment. Gurdon working hard. Also in the Sutterby of the Double Blues. And he'll be re rewarded for his efforts with a free kick. Dirt about to go into attack. Towards half forward it goes. Fireman is there. Into the pocket. Renfrey around the corner to John Painter. He's well tackled, loses possession. Umpire Barnett will call for a bounce. It's half forward left. And we're six, seven minutes into the first quarter. Bounce down on the half forward left flank. Five points to different Sturt in front. Only been two scoring shots. Here's a chance there as O'Keefe goes through. He's a big solid youth. Hooks it around the corner. Chance now. Oh, Redbone overran it. O'Sullivan gets the kick towards the boundary line and that's gone out in the right forward pocket. One goal to a point. In fact, I think you'll find that was Botka, who actual fact. Live on Nine Sports from Footy Park. Coffee comes over the top. Going through there was Radbone. Can't get it out. Painter against the tide with him is Krieg. But the umpire will ball it up inside the half forward line for the Blues. Neil Curley in that similar pose once more. And of his wife, Barbara. This thinks she's in hospital at the moment. Barbara, I hope you're feeling a lot, lot better, Barb. Mark O'Keefe, the lad from Warrnambool, contesting the ruck work for the Double Blues. Here's number three on your screen. The benefit of the people at home, like us, that haven't seen these new players before. And uh, well, he looks a strong country boy. Let's have a look at him once more. Up high, but the man coming out with the football was Coffey. The crumbs picked up there. Couldn't pick up that player. McGowan it was. Opportunity for the Blues. Oh, he had Radbone there, didn't use that player. Swinging the ball back was Kim Bartlett. Now an opportunity out there for David Buckley. Buckley in turn puts it out wide to Gilbert McAdam. He'll be met solidly by Lennon. Both players went without the football. Gilbert's still in there, but he's in friends and the free kick will go the way of the Blues. And that's Scott Field. Plays on with a handball. They go forward once more. That's Williams. He's not playing at fullback. We'll tell you who is in a moment. In fact, it's Llewellyn at fullback for the Blues. As Buckley tried to crash his way through once more. And the dogs go forward on the outer side looking for Ingerson. Ingerson with the ball in front of him. Can he keep it in play? Keeps it in play, but loses possession. Still at the dogs working hard out there. Also in there for Sturt was Burke, Frank Burke. And the free kick has been paid. we will go the way of McCarthy. Fine defender when he's playing well. A few knee problems in 89, but uh, let's hope he can stay sound for Kevin Higgins and the boys. McAdam up high, can't complete the mark, but he'll be paid the free kick. Gilbert McAdam. The dog's about to go into attack. The coffee. A wobbly old kick, doesn't cover much territory. Jim Russell goes in hard, but can't take possession. 
Finally directly with a hurried left foot kick back to the centre of the ground. Gurdon back to Coffey. The dogs have a chance to gain with a high kick up towards Big Rudy. Rudy has the sit. Can he take the mark? No, he can't. He should have. It was some good work by Big Rudy. Into the pocket it goes. Russell, Kim Russell with the football now. The handball. The chance now for Burke again from the half-back flank. Towards centre wing he goes. The fine mark has been taken by Lennon. Lennon checks side of centre wing to send the Blues into attack up to the half forward line. Looking there for O'Keefe, a very solid youth as he goes to the line, getting the ball out wide there is Sutterby. Quickly picked up Painter in towards full forward. The bounce will determine strong work there by Botka and Butley sees the ball out of play in the full forward right pocket. A goal to a point in a low scoring Foundation Cup first round. Ten minutes gone first quarter. The first and second quarters, 21 minutes only. The second same time plus time on. Ball hooked back. Sullivan can't get the kick away. Picked up Painter. Painter drops it up, looking for it now and finding it. Fine mark taken there by Kim Bartlett. A former under-19 player. He's not confident. He's on an ankle. The umpire's asked him to play on. Shoots for goal, but he's offline. One point only. Well, the angster did the right thing. He tried to open the face of goal and uh, increase his percentages. Unfortunately, it didn't quite come off. Sturt 1-1, one, one, central one point. As Ian mentioned, we're approaching the 11-minute mark now. And it has been a low-scoring game. Those players try to sort themselves out and develop a little bit of teamwork and fluency in their game. That's not a bad kick-in. And there's been an infringement there, and the free kick will go the way it appears to be Coffey. Coffey drops out a short pass and finds Stephen Schwert. Younger brother of Patrick, a former central player. Now it's Scott Lee with the football. He drives it in long. Man to make as the target. And he has the sit. He's underneath it or couldn't take it. Appeared to be interfered with. Play on the call. And that is a terrible shot at goal by the former Brisbane Bears rover in Lynn. Here's a golden opportunity missed in by Tony Lynn, former Bears player. Read it superbly, but didn't uh, didn't kick accurately. Lean it off, and Reynolds coming on for the double blues. Ball lost in the crowd here at Footy Park. There's Lean it, a very good ruckman. Excellent form last year. And of course, he's wearing that dark uh, paint under his eyes to uh, protect from the glares of the lights here at Footy Park. Into the bunker he goes. The kick back towards the half-back flank. Reynolds over the top, ball to ground. Goes in again, Reynolds gets it out. Renfrey. Rick there with a long handball. He certainly bulked up Richter this year. That's Lennon. G skillful. Kim Russell. That's good work on that occasion. Back to Richter again by the double blues. Back towards Harford. Well done, the double blues. Oh, it's a mark that Bartlett should have taken. And uh, they ran that ball superbly out of defence. And Bartlett there, former under-19 stir player who didn't play last year, didn't capitalise on, a, on a, a simple chess mark. The blues in front by six points. In front of the grandstand. Chance for Creek. On the left boot it goes. Russell in there, kicked off the ground. Central's working hard on this occasion through Sekadek. Lynn, ball out of play. And the boundary umpire will bring the ball in. Sturt 1 1 7, the Dogs 1 point. Keith Allen interchanging with Coffey in ruck for the Dogs. But in the meantime, it is. David Reynolds who gets the tap away. Here's a chance now. Swirt through. Can't get it out effectively. Lynn fighting for the ball with Painter. Taken quickly away by Ingerson. Up towards full forward. A chance. Rudy Man to make her out. He goes. Well, that could be out on the full. That's the way it's going. Penalty free kick to Hocking. And certainly this game in the first quarter hasn't reached the standard we saw in the previous one. Both teams anxious to get the football. Hocking only about 25, 30 metres out most acute angle as you can see is proximity to the boundary line ought to make the distance oh the kick is a shocker in fact I don't think he's even scored it's out on the full and not a good start by young Hocking for the 90 season without his first effort kicking for goal and you may have just seen in the bottom right hand side of your screen the experience of John Painter it's a, a feature of Eddie Hocking's game to try and run around the mark when uh, within proximity of the goals even if it is a set shot but uh, John Painter put paid to any chances Hocking had of doing that by policing the mark very closely. The ball brought into play. Ingerson over the top. Couldn't take the mark. Painter in there searching for a free kick. None forthcoming. And we'll have a bounce. Umpires officiating tonight. Mark Mackey and Mark Barnett. That's Mackey on screen. 
One of the more si experienced umpires now in South Australia. This is his 100th game tonight, uh, Kim Mark Mackey. And young Barnett, his co-umpire, certainly the umpire of the future. As Painter kicks around his body back towards centre wing. Gurdham is there and he takes the mark. The dogs are going to attack again. Centers the ball straight to Gilbert McAdam. He in turn goes to Craig. Craig with a long kick up towards goals. It goes really. He'll use his body. Good work by the big fella. Hits home. Hits the dogs. First goal. One one both teams. Well, that's a fine effort there. It's McAdam in the end that set it up. He put it away to Craig and He's a fine kicker of the football, Craig, and watch the bodywork of Mandamaker there as Llewellyn went back. No way that he could get to that ball. It's a fine goal, and that ties up the ball game. Seven points, both teams. Scores locked away at the 15-minute mark of the opening term of the late game here at Football Park. 1-1 one, one apiece. Good piece of shepherding by Rudy Mandamaker to allow the Dogs to post their first goal. Reynolds in the ruck there, opposed to Ingerson. Ingerson won the tap. The ball comes down to ground. Lennon in there, feeding out a handball. Oh, stolen by McAdam. Cleverly placed over the top towards Peter Creed. He kicked the last goal as the ball goes in long once more. Players set themselves from behind. Mandamaker fell over. Llewellyn gets the football, number 15 for the Blues. Pushes it out. Intercepting there is Hocking. Now picked up by Lynn as he pushes out a pass. He's searching for Gurdham. Gurdham has McCarthy to contend with. The ball now goes back towards... Chaplin, he lines them up and he's put it through. Certainly a fantastic goal by, uh, on that occasion, little Chaplin. Had an uh, inconsistent year last year, there you see it. And Chaplin on his left boot makes no mistake. And that's the dog second goal. They go to 2-1-13, Sturt 1-1-7. And we've played uh, 16 and a half minutes into this first quarter. The dog certainly having more of the play now. Sturt finding it difficult to get the ball beyond their half forward line. At the bounce, Keith Allen's onto the turf in opposition to Reynolds. Allen gets up higher, but Reynolds gets the tap away, not effectively. They work hard for the football. Russell comes to meet it. A free kick going the way of the Dogs. And Krieg is picking up a few kicks in this first term. He's going to drive in long. Off goes Mandemaker on the lead. Beautifully put Mandemaker up. Can't find the football. Getting back at defence is Williams. Has time to have a look. Painter. He'll put it to advantage out wide. Here's a chance now. Field got caught. Chaplin with a chance. Puts out the pass. Mandemaker on his own. And that's where the ball ends. Well, not good football by Sturt to lose that ball then. And Mandemaker's come up smiling with the ball. His first kick for the evening. And he's about 30 metres out on a 45 degree angle. The dog's just starting to bound on top now. Man to make most certainly will make the distance. He has popped that one through. He boots his first. The dogs are three one. Sturt one one on nine's wide world of sports. Yes, that was good play by Man to Maker. He was managed to get by himself. He got away from Llewellyn. In the end, it was the big chap in David Reynolds that had to pick him up. But let's see how the play was set up. Firstly, the handball went astray from field. Chaplin with good vision, placed it out wide. Mandamaker left by himself. Llewellyn was caught down the track and Rudy made no mistake. 3-1 plays, 1-1. Back in the centre, the bounce. The free kick will be paid. It'll go the way of the dogs. Too many stir plays in the square. Allen with the free kick towards half forward. Or oh, Richter dropped the mark he should have taken, but it's good enough to recover. Does it well in the end, comes towards centre wing. Lennon sits beautifully for him. Up towards half forward it goes, a long kick. Oh, almost a mark on that occasion to O'Sullivan, couldn't quite uh, take the mark. Painter goes in, puts his body between the player and the football, but finally umpire Mark Mackey will call for a bounce. Eight and a half minutes gone the first quarter, it's the Dogs 3-1, the Double Blues 1-1. Bounce down. Allen over the top. Dumped away. Painter. That was a clever, very skillful footballer, Jack Painter. Towards full forward. Can't find Bartlett. In a pack of players. Sturt with a chance now. With McGowan. With the ball goes his boot almost as far. And good defensive work by the Dogs. Knocks the ball out of play. 19 minutes into the first quarter. It's the Dogs by two straight goals. Keith Allen back in defence for the Dogs. 
always had a high opinion of this young man, but he doesn't seem to be able to make league football consistently. Maybe it's his year this year. O'Keefe in front. He's prepared to put his body. O'Sullivan gets it out. Here's a chance for them to clear through Chaplin. Short to centre wing. It's well put and taken by Anthony Ingerson and half-back. Flank. The dogs with method to get out of defence. Goes towards the half-forward line. Handley, Karchi, got knocked on the lolly there. Hocking gives it away. Here's a chance. Gurdam, he puts it over wide. Casper the Ghost is out there. Watch McAdam go if he can get the run of the football. Or runs himself into trouble. Has got to put it up high. Madden to make her on the lead. And that's the way the ball will run. Well, I thought he was going to get clear. And he would have just put space between him and number two. Had he got the football, he couldn't get the sit. But he's done the next best thing and got it to Mandemaker. Well, he's just slightly more acute than when he kicked his first goal. About the same distance. Kick number two towards the northern end. A nice looking kick, and that has threaded through the middle. He boots his second, and the dogs four. Well, tremendous play firstly on the grandstand side, but in the end it was McAdam. He didn't control the ball as cleanly as he would have liked, but oh, that was a brilliant kick under pressure in the end. He floated it up in the air, gave Mandamaker enough time to run underneath it, and Mandamaker has proved over a number of seasons now in South Australia what an ac accurate kick he is from, from either close in or well out. Back in the middle. The Dogs take control of the game in this first quarter. Reynolds, Allen went over the top, got the hand of the football, socket off the ground by Russell. Dogs the chance again through Gurdham. Marks at centre wing. There's the sign to end the first quarter. The Dogs 4 1 25, Sturt 1 1 7. The Blues got off to a good start with that early goal to Radbone, but then it was the experienced players of the Dogs that got on top in ruck, and then their running players, Gurdham, McAdam, and Co. started to get the ball out, and with Mandamaker kicking a couple at full forward, they went away to a handy lead. So there you have it, the Dogs leading four goals, 125 to Sturt, 117. It's the Bulldogs with an 18 point advantage. Welcome back to Football Park. Into the first quarter, it's the Dogs 4-1-25, leaving the Double Blues 1-1-7, a margin of 18 points. So you see the main goal kickers up until quarter time with Big Rudy kicking two. Graham Campbell, just looking at the game, I thought that the Dogs took control of the game mainly because they controlled the square. 
Oh, it's pretty obvious, Ken. There's just so much experience in the Bulldog lineup in comparison to the Sturt boys, you know. And they're feeling their way at the moment, Sturt. They really can't finish their work off. And generally speaking, they're giving it a, their old school try, but things aren't happening for them, are they, at the moment? What about the move of Young Lennon into the middle, Grant? Don't Have like you it? seen that? I don't like it, Ken. <laughs> Why? He's not a typical centre man. I like centre men to be about 5 foot 10. What's that in centre metres? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Around about 5 10, more agile. Like Lennon's a key position player. Full back, centre half back, centre half forward, even full forward. But not a centre man. Kevin Morris must change. Uh, Kevin Morris. What's his name? Higgins. Kevin Higgins has got to change his ways there. Well, Kevin Higgins obviously is, is trying a few things, Graham, and you can't blame him for that in the early days, particularly in the Foundation Cup. Well, Kenny's trying Kim Russell halfback flank. That's not working either, in my humble opinion. Kim Russell is an attacking player, should be playing on a wing. Okay, Graham, thanks for those comments. Well, it's the dogs at quarter time by 18 points. Now back to Ian Day. Thanks, Ken. Yes, a lead of 18 points, and the dogs kicking to the scoring. Uh, now they kick to the scoring end. Sturt with a chance this time. But they didn't show a lot through their half forward line at the bounce. It will be lean it back in rush in opposition to it looks like they've left Allen in there, have it? Yes. Allen gets the tap away, knocks towards the half forward line, trying to crash his way through their squirt. Can't get out. Gee, took a knee for his trouble, but the umpire will ball up once more. The dogs have got someone at full forward who can grab marks. That's a help as well. But I think the key word as the boys mentioned was the experience. Line ball that one. McAdam can't. Here's a chance now for Hocking. Oh, sidesteps beautifully, but the handball away is not good. Lean it. Gives it away to field. Caught on the left leg. Puts it up for grabs towards the half forward line. Can't quite get there. Well tried there by the big fellow in Bartlett. But the ball comes back now towards centre field. Quickly in is Renfrey. The ball held to that player, and the umpire will come in and bounce on the half forward line off the Blues. Frank Renfrey tried to crash his way through. That's Mark Barnett there. He's officiating with Mark Mackey. Barnett broke into the senior ranks last year and quitted himself quite well. Gilbert McAdam thought about the handball. In the end, it was as if he abandoned ship and uh, just chucked it over the top. It's O'Sullivan there. His handball out wide to Gurdon. What an improved player he was last season. He gives 110%. He's an extremely committed footballer. This time, the ball goes back. That was through Frank Burke. In turn, it's field. Oh, Whittlesey's given a free kick away when Field was running in towards an open goal, and that was foolish play by a senior player. It was, Kim, but the free kick was there, and the umpire did well to pick it up because it was just uh, just behind play fractionally. Back towards centre wing, the dogs go now. Ball to ground. On occasion up towards half forward by Chopper Hanley. Good defensive work by Kim Russell. Chance now for Burke. For Kim Russell along the boundary line. Swert with the football. Oh, is tackled vigorously by Greg Whittles. That's good aggressive football. Finally to Scotty Lee. Oh, Burke. Dr. Mark, he should have taken. Taken by Gilbert McCann and the long kick. Don't tell me he's kicked the goal. Will it go through? No. In fact, the free kick has been paid against Chaplin. It'll go the way of Richter. Geez, a skillful player, McCann. Does the uncanny thing at times. Goes out wide to Llewellyn. That's a fine mark by Llewellyn on the half-back flank. Llewellyn. Where's he going now? Strike me pink. He's uh, covered more ground than Burke and Wills. Goes in towards Russell. Russell back towards Field. He has a chance at ten wing grandstand side. A left foot kick towards half forward. Beats the players there. Laird, Gurdon. Oh, well done on that occasion by Sadovy. Beat two to get the football in towards full forward. Looking for Bartlett off the hands. It goes. A chance now for Sturt to kick a goal. They have it, Ville. It's home. Well, it was Robbie Veal. It was a bit scrappy play. The ball was forced into attack by Field, who made the, the error before when they were going into attack. But this time, Field kicked in shorter, and it was Sutterby playing off the half-forward line, who got the ball out of the pack, and it went up, and there was some scrappy play before Veal picked up in the square. He snapped truly, and Sturt got a very valuable goal on the board. But it's not smooth work through their half-forward lines. A 12-point advantage to the Bulldogs, but Sturt fighting back after a clever goal by Robbie Veal. Worked hard to fight his way into the league side last season. Let's hope he can have a consistent year. Eddie Hocking in there. It's pretty hard not to tackle Eddie around the shoulder. He receives a free kick for a high tackle. Plays on quickly. Out towards McAdam. It's a long, sweeping handball. Out towards Peter Krieg. He enjoyed a very good first term. He hangs back on that kick, looking for man to make it. Couldn't take it cleanly, though. Russell back there. A handball in turn to Richter. He's being harassed by Lim. Richter looking for support. It goes out towards 
Hanley, Chopper Hanley, who's back with the dogs this year after an unsuccessful stint last season with St Kilda. And he's still got the old number, Ken, number 37. He's a character, the old Chopper. Always laughing. Ball to ground, hocking with the football, threw it away. Oh, not paid by the umpire. A high kick up towards full forward, it goes. Brian Mark on that occasion will be taken by Schwert. No, Richter it is, sorry, Richter. Over towards McCarthy from the back pocket. Half back flank grandstand side, a long kick back towards centre wing. Bumped on by Wilsey, why he didn't take the mark, I don't know, towards Sutterby. He's been harassed by McAdam, in there is Laird also. Sutterby does it well again, up towards full forward, chance for Bartlett over that player's head. Working hard, Veal again, can he kick his second goal? No, he can't. Point on this occasion, and the Dogs, 4-1-25, lead the double blues, almost five minutes into the second quarter, they're 2-2-14. Botka kicks the ball into play to the outer side. It's Girdham, half-back flank. Looks for Swerd at centre wing. With him is McGowan. Puts on the tackle, but the ball is fumbled out of play. 4-1 to 2-2. A throw in at centre wing. It'll be Keith Allen and Brett Leanett. The bodies go in. Lennon comes over the top and gets the thump away. But it went towards Pyman. Oh, beautifully done there by Radbone. He boots him into attack up towards a half forward on almost Sutterby. O'Sullivan loses the ball. Here's a chance. Veal edged off it well by Buckley. Veal goes down. Pyman over the top. And umpire Mark Mackey will come in and bounce on the half forward line. Almost a promising passage of play there for Sturt. The scenario was good, they just couldn't finish it off. The bounce on the half forward line, the bodies go in. Once again, Allen gets his body in, but it's Chaplin who doesn't know where to go. Takes his 10, fires it out towards the half bank, uh, back flank. Well put there to O'Sullivan. He drives long. No, that wasn't O'Sullivan. Sikadek as he drives to the half forward line. Ingerson gets it over to Lynn. Lynn in short. Mandemaker on the lead. Quickly it's Lee. Lee hooks around the corner, but he's just off line. And the dogs nudge their second point. They lead 4-2 to 2-2. Just past the six-minute six mark of the second term, and it's McCarthy to bring the ball back into play. 4-2 plays 2-2. McCarthy, short pass. Oh, the mark hasn't been taken by Scott Lee. It nearly was completed, though. In there is Radbone, but Lee's desperation keeps the ball in the area. So, too, the same desperation showed by Darren Williams. Kim, have you seen Scott Lee's move to forward, up forward? Well, I like the idea of him running in a straight line. I think uh, he's proved himself over a number of seasons now in defence, and I think he looks more comfortable there. But uh, I suppose it's a bit like putting a horse out in the paddocks for a while. Ken, it'll freshen him up a run like this. I think once the uh, business end of the season starts, you'll find him back in defence. The uh, Sturt supporters one holding the ball against Gilbert McCadam, but by right, Barnett, this is my football, I'll have a bounce. Our forward, right for the dogs. Tapped away, Veal thumps it on. It was Lynn. Painter working hard around his body back towards centre wing, but it's all the dogs here through Girdham. Lovely handball. Finds Krieg. The lead on from Man to Mugger. That's the way it goes. Big Rudy! Has the mark been paid? Yes. Big Rudy's got his hands to the ball on a few occasions tonight, but uh, got one or two marks. A beautiful uh, kick on that occasion by Krieg. Well, Ken, uh, Coach Higgins has made the move. McCarthy's on Mandamaker now, and Llewellyn, the chap is, that was playing fullback before, is now on Anthony Ingerson. Mandamaker going towards the golf course end. 4-2 plays 2-2. Two -two. The dog's in front. Big Rudy, one of the, the colourful characters of the game of footy. It's a big kick. It's Ali for Rudy. Just offline. Is it through? Well, they all hesitate, but the goal on pass says it's one point. I know what I would have done if I was English. I would have raced off and kicked a goal or tried to kick a goal. One point, four, three, plays two, two. It hits the golden rule, Ken. Play to the whistle. It's Richter actually kicks in this time. Up towards centre field. Lennon takes the ball unopposed. Drives long to the half forward line. Veal comes to meet the ball. Won't quite get there. Loose ball. Well done, O'Sullivan. Hooks around the corner. Finds McCadden at centre wing. The dogs into attack through Casper again. Puts out the pass to the half forward line. Looking for little Eddie Hocking. And he almost got it. Got his hands to it. Lee throws it out more and hope than anything. Burke thumps it back from whence it came. McAdam sets it up again. This time Lee hooks around the corner. Half forward line. Ingerson can't find it. But the umpire has found a free kick for an illegal shepherd. It's going to Radbone of Sturt at centre half back. He drives the ball back towards centre wing. Coffee's up there. That's a fine mark over the top of O'Keefe. 
the crowd don't like it, but I think the grab was there. And it's Coffey, yes, you can see it in replay, no question about that at all. Kick number six for Grant Coffey as he kicks long to the half forward line, up looking for Ingerson, who had one on three there, taken by Lynn Court on the left leg. That tie won't make the distance. Mandamaker's in front, McCarthy goes for the spoil sensibly, and Sturt get out of trouble through Russell. The kick is out wide, looking for Burke, that appears to be. In fact, it's not, it's Williams, number 38. He puts it up high. Now they're looking for a key front position. One grab, two grab, three, and it's been paid. He was looking to play on, he was then pushed in the back. And uh, Mark Mackey not sure what decision to make, so he lets play go. The mark stood. Strong mark taken in defence there as the handball goes out from... Gurdham out wide to Laird. Laird in turn searching for Ingerson out there. Can't get there. The quickest man is Radbone and he takes the ball over the line. And we've had one change already, Ken. Off the ground is Frank Renfrey and David I is onto the ground and a free kick is being awarded to Central. Now surely that couldn't be for taking the ball over the line intentionally. Incredible. Can't work that one out. Big leap by Mandamaker. Couldn't take the mark. Player held when not in possession there was Hocking, and he'll receive the free kick. Little Eddie Hocking. They love him out at uh, Bulldog Territory. They really do. Took the football at centre half forward. We're 10 minutes into the second term. It's the Dogs by 13. Oh, it's a shocking kick by uh, an occasion. Hocking put his, player, his team under an enormous amount of pressure. Sat upon by Williams. And the umpire will call for a bounce. That was Scotty Lee. As we see uh, Sadi Ghazi about to come on for the Dogs. That's a big name, I can tell you. Sadi Ghazi taken by Chopper Hanley in towards full forward, but Chopper's kicking hasn't improved. <laughs> and straight through for a minor score. And the Dogs go to 4 4 28, Sturt 2 2 14. Lid off, Sadi Ghazi on. Gee, you're going to get a few derivations of that name, I can assure you. McCarthy in, drives in long for the lead of Coffey. Over the top, Lean it was in there. Field gets it out. Well done. Off the fingers, it came back to Llewellyn. He kicks long towards half forward line. Kim Bartlett puts it out wide. Here's a chance for Sturt to go into attack. Russell wants to sit, gets it. Puts out a pass in towards the forward line. And he found Whittlesey edging down from the centre into the pocket. And the Sturt skipper's got it about 35 metres out on a 45 degree angle. It's only his third kick. Leonard and David Reynolds interchange as the eyes of the Sturt camp right on number nine. The Blues could do with a goal right now. Kicks going across the face. Big leap coffee over the top. Can't control it. Over the line it goes for a point. And that takes the Blues now on to 2-3. The Dogs are fourth. A pass to the pocket, searching for Bill. Punts away from that player. First man there would be Radbone. Be hard for anyone to beat him. He's that quick. The handball goes back towards Bill. Check side kick. It's the post. Well, they're in there, Sturt. They're on 2-4. The Dogs are 4-4. And we've had 12 and a half minutes of the second term. There's one thing about them, uh, Kim. They're certainly hanging in there, not throwing the towel in. The kick-off goes to Squirt. Can cover much territory. He looks for leads further afield. Looks for Casper. That's Gil McAdam. He can't take the mark. He'll give away a free kick there for a put from the back. He'll go the way of Scotty Field. Gil was not happy. Not happy at all. Talking to the umpire. But it was there, it was quite obvious. And Scotty Field now with a chance to boot Sturt's third goal, 13 minutes into the second quarter. Gilbert McCann. There's Scott Field. That's somewhat an up and down year last year, Scotty Field. A better player than we saw last year. Pick number four for Scotty Field. He'll get the distance. The actor is home. Sturt's third goal. Well done, Scott Field. The Blues are certainly attacking the ball. They're just making a few mistakes with their disposal of it. But on that occasion, it was clearly a push in the back from Gilbert McAdam. He showed a lot of frustration with the umpire, but he'd given away a free kick. And it's understandable showing that frustration because you don't like to see a free kick that you've given away score a goal. But that's an important one to Sturt. One straight kick, the difference. 4-4 to 3-4 as the Dogs look for a quick reply. The ball put out towards Garzi. Too strong though is Walk. Looks for support. He uses the back door. Door, I should say. In the turn, it's, in turn it's Russell who puts it out wide. I'm sounding like Ken. And the ball goes towards the boundary line. You're not that good, old son. Throw-in will take place. Grandstand side here at Footy Park. As the Sturt 
edge back into this game. Six points of difference. <laughs> Hocking takes the football. Over to no way. Over towards the McCannon. I'm not going to take a breath and let him get in. Ingerson to Gertham. Back to Ingerson. Towards centre half forward. McGowan with the football now. Blistering place, this young bloke. Towards centre wing it goes. Over the pack, top of the pack. Second hit, first player there. Being harassed by Painter. Second hit, Painter. Ball towards the line and finally out of play. Dottie Painter appealing for the free kick, but it certainly wasn't there. Second hit. Number 55. You're watching this game live on Nine's Wide World of Sports. At the throw in, Painter threw, got his boot to the ball, but not effectively. Back in defence, it's Swerty. Had a brilliant year last year. Scott Lee drives it back towards Ingus at centre wing. But off the pack, it goes out of play. 4-4 four, four to 3-4 four in a low-scoring game. 15 minutes into the second quarter. Sturt hanging in there, working extremely hard for the ball. Reynolds against Ingerson. Reynolds in front, tried to find Whittlesey, couldn't lead through without the football. And once again, players stack up and the umpire is forced to bounce once more. Umpire Mark Barnett in charge, joined by Mark Mackey. Hocking off, Minchington on for the Dogs as the ball comes out towards uh, centre wing and Laird. He can't get it out. It's a bad passage of play. Here's a chance for Garzi. Garzi gets the handball away, <laughs> but off the side of the boot of Chopper Handley. The ball goes out on the full, and the penalty free will go the way of Sturt. Well, the handball was very good from Garzi, but uh, Handley not equal to the occasion. And as Ian mentioned, Minchington onto the ground. He had a magnificent final series in the reserves last year, which ultimately ended up with a premiership flag. The kick is long. Front position, the ball goes down towards McAdam. He intelligently punches the ball out wide. First player there will be Kim Russell. Snares it with the left hand. Pushes it out wide looking for Bill. He's causing a few headaches from his forward pocket. The quick handball back to Scott Field. He puts it up high. The ball goes over the line for a point. And the Blues move on to three goals, five. Trailing central, 4-4. Four, four, edging that little bit closer at the 16 and a half minute mark. And Neil Curley wouldn't be happy with this quarter from his side. They, to me, have... Uh lack the urgency about their game as a consequence Sturt have got back into it all being forced out of play that Sutter be working hard for it but uh, couldn't gain possession and young Simon Sutterby comes from Newton he also played for the Geelong reserves and Newton in fact Ken was the side that Kevin Higgins coached in the uh, Victorian Geelong area Reynolds to Painter Painter up towards full forward it goes Richter can't gain possession Timon was desperate for the dogs. Scrambly play, but a free kick will be paid to David I for pushing the back. Wearing number 24, of course, the jumper worn by the former Sturt champion and coach, Rick Davies. I tucked away in the pocket. The long kick had a lob into the square. Players go up high off hands. A chance now for this occasion. Barnett smothered at the last moment. That would have been a an important goal for the Double Blues. Only a minor score. Central's 4-4-28. Sturt are three goals, 5-23. 3-6-24. Kim Bartlett, he's a big lad. He's 194 centimetres and uh, 93 kgs. Garzi with the football. Whittlesey there. Youth versus experience. Going through strongly and doing it well was Buckley. Gets out a handball more in hope than anything. Painter with a chance. Paddles the ball. Loses it to McAdam. He throws out the handball. Buckley again. Lost it. Creed can't find the handle either. In goes Field. The tackle might have been high. That's the way the umpire rules. And the free kick goes to Creed. Just the check side of the centre line. In turn, Swert gets it. Drives long to the half four line. Looking for Ingerson. Fine mark. Too strong in the air. Slips out a handball wide. And with a chance now. Gertham on the lead. Mandamaker can't quite get there. Garzi. Open goal but he's pushed in the back as he got rid of the football. The umpire doesn't see it that way. The ball hits the behind post, and, of course, that's a penalty-free kick for out on the full. Walk brings the ball back into play, centres it nicely. Oh, McAdam intercepts, though, couldn't take it cleanly. Burke now gets a long handle over the top. Opportunity there for the Blues, picked up now by Field. He's having a good game, slick handle out towards David I. The Blues are a real chance here as they go forward once more. Setting himself there was Botka for the spoil. The crumbs now go down towards 
O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan kicks it out wide to the open spaces. First player there will be Kim Russell. Thought about support, took his time. It now goes back towards McGowan. He sits that one up nicely, and the mark's taken there by Darren Bauer. Plays on quickly. In turn, he finds Darren. In fact, it wasn't Williams. It was Bartlett back towards Bauer. Bauer ran down. He was a little bit too slow there. Veal working hard, punches the ball forward. It now goes back towards the boundary line and we'll have it throw it in that left forward pocket. Sadly, the game becoming a little bit scrambled at the moment as we go almost to the 20-minute mark of the second quarter. It's the Dogs by four points. Coffey taps it away. Chance for the Dogs through Gurdham. Shocking handball taken by I. I with a long kick. It's off the side of the boot up towards full forward. It goes, in fact, out of bounds, is it? No. Through from minor score again occasion to the double blue so it's the dogs 4 4 28 Sturt 3 7 25 three points of difference 20 minutes into the second quarter the dogs haven't been able to kick a goal in this quarter kick on the outer side taken away there by O'Sullivan up to it oh that's a strong mark a courageous mark there by Creek even though he dropped the ball Garzi goes towards the half forward line Handley can't find it coming strongly to meet it now is McCarthy the Blues into attack, short, thrown out by eye out wider still. Here's a chance, Lennon. Lennon goes to the half forward line, Radbone. Time going to run out, only about 20 seconds left. Radbone puts it up, looking to the half forward line. Up goes the big fellow on O'Keefe, can't bring it down. A chance for Sikadek, he can't find it. Certainly they can through Buckley, but Sturt will still have a chance. Oh, O'Keefe overruns the ball, Buckley gets it out. Well, that is quite amazing. The Double Blues trailed by 18 points at quarter time. The football's been scrambly, but a feature of this third side tonight has been their persistence. They've worked hard and they've arrested the lead away from the Dogs in the dying moments. They now lead by three points. Yes, the half-time score, Sturt, four goals, 7.31, in front by three points over the Dogs. Dogs, 4-4, 28. Welcome back to Football Park. Of course, it's half time in the uh, second game. It's uh, sturdy in front, four goals, seven to four four, and certainly a great quarter on that occasion by the Double Blues. There you see it, four one at quarter time, the Dogs to one one, the Double Blues, and at half time, it's uh, sturdy in front on that occasion by three points. The main goal kickers for the Dogs, men to make it two, and Radboneville, Field and Whittlesey kicking the goals for the Double Blues. But certainly a good second quarter by the Double Blues, working extremely hard and uh, they came back very, very strongly to the Bulldogs and no doubt their coach Kevin Higgins would be extremely pleased in particular with their second That's quarter. Good. Okay, the uh, first game tonight was between Glenelg and West Adelaide and certainly a good game of football, a very entertaining game uh, by both sides. West Adelaide surprised me, they really did. There you see it quarter by quarter, the Tigers 3-2 to 4-3 at quarter time. Then at half time it was 6-6 to 5-4 and finally the Tigers there, 13 goals, 15 were too good for West Adelaide. The main goal scorers for the Tigers, Fidge a strong point of full forward kicking six, Mansell two and for West Adelaide the main goal kicker there was Goss booting four. Joining me now, I have the general manager of the SNFL, Film, Mr. Lee Wicker. Lee, welcome to the program. Thanks, Ken. Lee, what are the main aims of the, of the league going into the 1990s? Well, Ken, I think the 80s saw probably the uh, greatest decade in the history of the league and uh, football in South Australia. And it's certainly our aim to consolidate that position, uh, for clubs to become uh, uh, very competitive and for us to uh, promote the game at the highest level. Do you see it being our most challenging decade, Lee? I think so, Ken. Uh, the last two or three years uh, have been most uh, difficult years yes. in the sense that uh, there's a great uncertainty with uh, South Australian football, particularly with the influence uh, that was being bestowed upon us by the, uh, the, the VFL and a uh, great uh, drain on our player ranks, but I think uh, we're gradually uh, getting on top of that and I think uh, the next uh, two or three years leading into the 90s we're going to see South Australian football uh, uh, really merge ahead. And obviously we'll see some significant changes, Lee, in, the, in this decade as well. Yes, uh, I think already uh, the fact that uh, we've started to yep. look at uh, maximising Football Park by the way of West Torrens uh, moving down here, that's the, uh, the start of uh, I think other sides uh, giving consideration to the same move. 
But we've said for the last five years we need to consolidate uh, Football Park and Adelaide Oval and that's the first step. I think it's a very positive step and a very exciting one. Well, Lee, last month, not of course, the, uh, the league announced its, uh, its S S SNFL promotion. What, what sort of is its theme? Well, basically, uh, Ken, uh, football over the years has been uh, traditionally promoted for the people that have been going to football. Yep. We're looking at new markets. There's a uh, young group of people out there from the 18 to 30 years of age that uh, we're very interested in. And we want to make football but, uh, appealing to them and that's the theme that uh, we're approaching this year and we hope uh, it'll be successful. Well I was certainly was impressed with the tape Lee. Let's have a look at the tape now which, which we saw last Monday night. Here we go. Australian footy, the hottest place to be this winter. Gee, Lee, I like the music, it's fantastic. I think it's got a very uh, fresh <laughs> approach and uh, it, it is a good ad. got a great ring to it. Lee, what about the move of West Torrens here to Footy Park? Uh, obviously a very progressive move and the league no doubt very happy with it. Yes, Ken, it gives us more flexibility yep. with matches. Uh, it enables us to uh, play some double headers. Uh, they weren't programmed uh, in the original program no. this year and some Sunday footy and I think Sunday footy is going to be more popular as time goes on where people uh, are looking to uh, greater flexibility in their lifestyle. And obviously giving the, the league uh, power to sort of change a game from a suburban ground to uh, footy park is, a, is a, a forward thinking move too Lee obviously. Yes Ken I think if we recall last Father's Day when yep. uh, Port Adelaide Terrific. North uh, moved Fantastic from uh, Alberton that yeah. was a great result 30 odd thousand people and it certainly has paved the way for the future. Well Lee good luck I know it's a very challenging decade coming the league's way but I'm sure they'll handle it uh, with, the, with, with great style. Well, thanks very much, Ken. Thanks, Lee. That's uh, Lee Wicker, of course, the general manager of the SANFL. And, of course, the other games coming up over the weekend. There you see it, Norwood playing south at the parade tomorrow. Tomorrow night at Port Curry is certainly a big game there for the country fans. Port Adelaide playing North Adelaide. And on Monday, here at Football Park, the game starts at uh, 8.30. A telecast at 9pm. It's the big one, Torrens playing Woodville. We'll come back with more footy after the break.
Football Park. Joining me now, Graham Campbell. Graham, how does Sturt get back into that game? Well, can I try to put my finger on what it was? Because it's been a reasonably scrappy game, as you've mentioned yep. a couple of times. But pace and persistence are their two fortes at the moment. They've been persistent all night, but their pace, especially Radbone, uh, is so quick off the mark, isn't he? And McGowan, Incredible. they are terribly quick players uh, in, in the Sturt lineup. And uh, we, young Shane Bradbury gets his first goal here. That's an incredible goal, Ken. You can't kick him from there. Well, he does. <laughs> <laughs> I simply can't. He didn't think about it. That's how he got it. You've got to just put ball to foot, or foot to ball, whichever way you want. <laughs> and uh, if you steer it through, it's half it's half good fortune. What about the centre line, Jules? I thought I thought Peter Craig, in particular, oh. along with McAdam, held sway across in the ground. Well, I think that Craig is clearly best on the ground at the moment. Yes. Uh, Bruce Lennon, as I said, a quarter time is a little bit uh, out of position, in my opinion. That was a great goal by Peter Craig, and also good work there by Big Rudy Mann to make it. Yeah, well, see, I think Bruce Lennon, as I said, Ken, is a little bit uh, top heavy for playing in the middle, yeah. especially against the player of Craig's uh, brilliance, if you like, and uh, he knows where to go and what to do in the middle. Mind you, I'm, you've got to give a man a chance, and Bruce Lennon would never have played centre before. So it's a tough task for him tonight, and Gilbert McAdam, yes, the old ghost, as Ian Day calls him, <laughs> he's all over the place. He's great to watch. I love him. And Robbie Ville had some chances up forward for, for, for Sturt. Perhaps uh, didn't capitalise on all the chances that he had, Graham. Well, he's playing a luxury position, Ken, just, uh, you know, forward of centre there and just finding the ball. And there's, there's a good goal by Ville, though. Yeah. He's a player that has kicked a few goals in his time at Sturt. And uh, maybe, given the second chance uh, with the new coach, he might be he might come up trumps. Well, talking about kicking goals, what about that magnificent goal by Greg Whittlesey on the side at half-time? Unbelievable. A little bit of luck helps in football, doesn't it? There's a second to go here, I swear. And it just gets <laughs> over the line. It could have been touched by the central player coming in, but it wasn't. And good luck to Sturt because uh, they're similar to West Adelaide in the first game, Ken. No one gave them any chance at all. Although I did say one to ten, you might remember. You did. You did. You were spot on, Graham. <laughs> you are spot on. So the game's there still to be won, and they're playing good footy at the moment. Good luck to them. Well, let's hope that uh, they can stick with, uh, with of course, uh, the dogs in the second half. Let's now take you to David Mackay. Adrian, welcome to uh, South Australia. You've only been here a week. Thanks, David. Yeah, it's been a quick trip, and... Um, yeah, it's good to get out there tonight and play. It was excellent. Well, I suppose the first thing, if you've only been here a week, how's the fitness? Um, struggled a bit towards the end. I was starting to look for some petrol from somewhere, and um, yeah, the legs were going up and down. But I'm sure that over the next couple of weeks that'll come. Have you had an opportunity to get to, to, get, to get to know many of the Glenelg players? Yeah, they've been very good actually, and um, I knew a few before I arrived there, and they've made me feel very welcome. They're a good bunch of blokes. What about Cornsey, the coach? Yeah, he's been very good, Graham. He's uh, made me feel welcome and. He's understood that I'm a little bit behind and, um, yeah, he's been very, very helpful. You started your career with the Melbourne Footy Club and then went to the Sydney Swans. 90-odd games with uh, Melbourne, 10 in, uh, in Sydney. Why so short in Sydney? Uh, Sydney was just very frustrating. I went there from Melbourne. I was 24 and I was expecting to play good football and, unfortunately, I just had a run of injuries that was horrendous, really, and um, Lady Luck didn't smile on me up there, so I'm hoping things will change here. Well, you went there with a huge reputation the year you left Melbourne. You had a very successful year. I'm sure it was well publicised that the Sydney Swans paid big money for you. Were you disappointed with the hierarchy and the structure of football in Sydney? Sydney's very... It's very difficult to set up a team interstate and... You know, it's, it's, it's really hard, and Sydney, they did the best they could, but unfortunately they had a lot of problems the first year I was there. Power Play, who were the owners then, uh, they ran into financial trouble as a result of the stock market crash, and things were very difficult in 88. Uh, last year with Willisey and the group of guys he's got around him, well, they, they really picked things up, and I'm sure Sydney will, will go ahead, but it just shows that it's very difficult to set up a club interstate. Well, Adrian, coming from outside, a lot of people are asking, should South Australia join the national competition you've played in Melbourne, Sydney? Would you recommend that Adelaide does join? Well, I think, I guess somewhere down the track it's going to be inevitable, but, inevitable, but I would just suggest that South Australia really has a good look at it, and there are a lot of problems at the moment, and I, I just feel that they are in the driver's seat, and I think South Australia should do what's best for South Australia and, and really have a good place look at it. Well, coming back to Glenelg, you've had a chance now to have a look at the players under match condition. Uh, you know, how do you assess the strength of the club? Well, we expected West Adelaide to be very fierce tonight and they've had a very horrendous summer, haven't they? They've had a lot of upsets and we knew they'd be hard to beat, but it was great to get the points and we had a few guys out tonight and I'm sure we've got a lot of improvement in us. Well, Adrian, I'm sure you'll be a great acquisition to Glenelg, a great acquisition to uh, South Australian football. Good luck for the following year and thanks for the interview. Thanks very much, David. Welcome back to Football Park and our telecast of Friday Night Live Football. Well, you see the double blues uh, on the ground after half time, and Ian and Kim uh, looking at some of the new players that uh, that have that we have seen tonight for the double blues. Have you seen Marco Keith's game at centre half forward, number three? 
Well, Ken, I think he looks a very solid customer, and I'd like to see a bit more of him. As you'd all know, he comes from Warrnambool. He played centre-half forward. He's 190 centimetres tall, and he played also with Geelong Reserves. And what we've seen of him, although his stats are not very marked at this stage, he uses his body well, and I think Sturt are going to need some strong players in front of goal. Yeah, appears to make good position, Ken. At this stage, we really haven't seen a lot of him. I think he's just been shaded by John O'Sullivan, the new boy for Central District. But uh, he's had three kicks. He's taken one mark and a handball, so it's not a big effort from centre-half forward. We can see just on the screen there, number 11. Now, how have you seen his game more importantly? Because he's come with the larger wraps, number 11 for Central District. Actually, he's been, he's been very impressive. Uh, he, he really is an impressive player, O'Sullivan. I think that uh, he's certainly going to be a very... Good acquisition to the Bulldogs. Uh, Ian, would you agree? Well, Kenny's um, his record's good. He comes from East Fremantle. He's played, uh, represented Western Australia on a few occasions. He's actually captain Western Australia on one occasion. He's in the old language, six one and a half. He's 24 years of age. He looks the goods and a great recruit for the Dogs. Well, here it is. Everything in readiness for the second half. The first round of the Foundation Cup and stirred in front by three points as umpire Mark Barnett starts it underway. And it's Lena who wins the tap. It goes straight down towards. Well, that appeared to be... Couldn't pick up that player, in fact, but the ball goes back the other way, and underneath that, a strong mark taken by Ingerson. Very good mark by Ingerson. And he's a player that possesses a lot of ability. He's just struggled to put it all together, but he's only a youngster. And uh, as we mentioned a number of occasions last year, he plays the most difficult position on the ground, and that's centre-half forward. So I'm sure as he matures... He'll conquer that position and be a more than useful player for the Dogs. He lines up the left foot kick. The distance won't be a problem, nor is the accuracy. What a great start. Yes, a great start. That's his first goal by young Anthony Ingerson. He showed signs last year that he could be a very good player for the Bulldogs. Has a very good pair of hands. As Kim made mention, I agree. He was at times inconsistent last year, but that's to be expected from a young kid, and I'm sure that... That uh, experience that he had last year is going to stand him in very good stead. He'll be a useful player at centre-half forward for the Dogs. The Dogs' first goal since the first quarter. For some reason, the lake end seems to be the scoring end. Lena up, gets the tap away. In towards uh, that man we're talking about, O'Keefe. Lena drives it in up towards full forward. Bartlett couldn't. Here's a chance for O'Sullivan to clear. He looks pretty cool. Gets it out. Sikadik, out wider still now. Robertson's on the turf. As Lee comes through, he gets mown down. So too does Lee at a chance now for uh, Creed. Creed can't get it out. McAdam gets a saddle put on him. No, it's not the bottom of the pack there. It's Hocking, and he gets the free kick. Drives the ball towards the half-forward line. Looking up there for Ingerson. It's two on one. Lenat takes care of Ingerson. Back there is uh, Whittles. He looks like he's gone into the back pocket. We'll check that one for you. Was playing centre earlier. Well played there by I to get the ball to Painter. Stirred into attack on the lead. Bill, well done. Bill might not be able to make the distance. Sets it up now. O'Keefe stands his ground over the top. They slaughter him and he's going to get a free kick. Oh, what a play to get a free kick. I think the umpire ruled that Bot could probably put his hand on his shoulder. Well, well he did and he didn't. But right. I suppose you've got to have it's only black or white, isn't it? Well, Gee. whatever. He's got a free kick right in front of goal. And what a place to get it, as I mentioned earlier after the groan of having watched the replay. There it is, his first goal. Well, we were talking about O'Keefe uh, just prior to the commencement of this third term, and it was good thinking by Robert Ville. He could see O'Keefe out there, but he hung the ball up a little too high, and in the end, uh, Botka was committed to the football, and I think O'Keefe a little fortunate to get the free kick. Nevertheless, he capitalised, he kicked his first, and once more he's put his side back in front. The Double Blues now lead by three points at the three-minute mark of this term. Back in the middle, that was a gimme free kick if ever I've seen one. It's Allen and Leonard. The Double Blues in front by three points. Down goes the bounce. Allen, Craig. The good, and it's good work by the dogs as they go up towards full four. Big Rudy. Oh, strong mark, Rudy. Great grab by the big man. Gee whiz, he got his hands around that football. He says, that's my ball. Big Rudy, in typical fashion with the socks down. If the dogs are to have a good year, this bloke has to fire. Big Rudy going towards the lake in. If he gets on it, he'll lob it right. Fair nick him in the middle of the lake. Man to make up. 
The chance to put the dogs back in front. The kick, it's on its way. What's he done? He's hit the box. Right kick, Pete. Really wouldn't be pleased about that. The dogs, 5-5, 35. Sturt, 5-7, 37 in the here. Strong mark by Rudy. It was a top mark, but sadly, didn't finish the work off. Leanett flies for the ball with him. He's swirt. The ball goes back past their Bauer. Here's a chance. Garzi gets it out. Robertson twists this way, that away. Gives it back to Hocking under pressure. And Sturt should get out through Bauer. Bauer takes his time to get the kick away. Up towards the half-forward line. In front of again, O'Keefe. Well, we told you about this fellow. He's starting to come. on nine's wide world of sports. Well, that was beautifully set up by the Blues. The Dogs had three opportunities and blew every one. And in the end, the long kick came in and it was O'Keefe who took a strong mark. He fed the handball out quickly to Lennon. Lennon in turn gave it over towards I and David I didn't miss from about 35 metres. Great play, the Blues. Gee, Mark O'Keefe has uh, come alive at centre half forward, but a bad mistake made up forward by Garzi when he went for the handball, should have had a kick. Never mind, that's history now. And the Blues in front by eight points, five minutes into the third quarter. Is this going to be an upset or what? Down goes the bounce. Allen again. Lynn around the body towards centre half foot. Mitching in front, couldn't take the mark. Craig up towards full forward. Rudy from behind. Ball to ground. Richter. Handball out towards Whittles. He's taken by Hawking. Hawking the snap. I think he's got it. Well, they were due to get one. Gurdham and also young Krieg. Gee, they're working well getting the ball in. On that occasion, we saw Hocking on the left leg get it round brilliantly to kick a goal. The dogs are obviously very happy with it. But some of their play in the forward division hasn't been all that smart. Whittlesey definitely has gone back into defence. And as we mentioned, that was a great snap there by Hocking. The Blues leading 6-5 to 6-7, a two-point advantage. And we're six minutes into the third term. Over the top of that was Lennon. The ball now goes out towards Garzi. Oh, he has a bit of dash. He tried to soccer it off the ground. Great play by Lennon, though, to get the ball back to Painter. In turn out wide to Radbone, who kicked the first goal of the game. Up high, O'Keefe couldn't snatch that one. Now socket off the ground by Painter. The ball put out towards Laird. Laird held back on that kick, aiming for Garzi or the boundary. He found... Garzi in turn, just hesitating a little bit, just trying to find his feet. How about that for a bit of magic? Didn't quite pay off as it was intercepted there by Whittlesey. And we'll have a throw in on the outer side. And yes, Garzi's had a few opportunities, and Kevin Higgins looking fairly anxious, which is understandable when there's two points to difference. But Garzi just taking a few touches to find his feet. He is, Kevin. He's made one or two mistakes, but I'm sure he'll settle down with the tempo of the game coming from the VFI. He won the Eastern Medal last year as their best player. Suddenly working hard for the uh, Blues, but the ball is forced out of place and a wing out of side. Seven minutes into the third quarter, another close battle here at Footy Park. The opening of the 1990 Foundation Cup footy. It's two points of difference. McAdam. It's taken by McGowan, though. High kick back towards half forward. Players working for possession. He's off the ground by Allen. It's all stirred through McGowan again. He put the Blues into attack towards centre half forward. Oh, strong mark. This occasion by O'Sullivan. The left foot up back towards the centre of the ground. Oh, hockey! Went up early. Didn't quite get the set. Come beautifully by Whittlesey. Now the Blues move it. This is Lennon. Towards centre half forward. Ball to ground. A high kick back to the centre. Game Whittlesey playing well in this quarter. Over to Richter. Radbone. Oh, busted off the football. Is that in the back? Yes, there's umpire Mark. Against Gurdham, and Richter will take the free kick. Young Radbone is well out from goal, but he's put it in towards the forward pocket. Up with the big fellow Bartlett. Quickly in his Sutterby, but I'm not sure he wasn't out of bounds when he kicked the ball, but that's not why the umpire ruled out on the full, and the penalty free kick will go to Pat Swert in defence. Swert. Edges the ball out of defence, back towards the half-back line. Ingerson there, lean it over the top, strong mark. Half-forward line, 
or slips it back to Whittlesey. Maybe he is still playing in the centre. He drives in long up towards Bartlett again. Border ground, whipped out by Botka Lee. Needs a running player, finds it in Swert. Garzi, back to Swert in the double play. Hooks round the corner, in towards centre. Well done, taken by Whittlesey. He got it then from I, but the kick is the shocker. Gurdon slips it out, Craig, McAdam. McAdam wants to run up, but he's going to fade his way out of this. Slips out the handball, Gurdon playing well. Drives in towards the half forward line. Hocking can't on the half volley. Works the ball towards Garzi. Can't get through, walk in. Here's a chance, Minchington towards the open goal. Got to get a handball over, lay down, Miss there. Red man to make her. Well, that was good play by the Dogs, and full credit to young Garzi, who ran straight at the ball, which gave the opportunity to Minchington. He pushed it forward. Minchington drew the player. Eventually, the long handle was nearly a fraction too long, but big Rudy snared it with his right hand, and he managed to post his third goal. And uh, the Dogs have hit the lead back here at Football Park at the nine-and-a-half-minute mark. 47 plays 43. Almost 10 minutes into the third term. It's the Blues. Going into attack again. It's got to be a free kick to Lennon. I'm quite right on the spot. The Blues into attack. And Kevin Higgins would be pleased with their performance so far, I'd imagine. Up towards full forward it goes. Swert crumbed it beautifully. All over the top to lay there in trouble. Back to second deck. McAdam looking for O'Sullivan. He's strong and robust. Taps it out towards Swert again. They're filling about. Back to Swert. Swert. O'Sullivan run down. A good tackle by O'Keefe. Krieg. McGowan. Now they've got possession of the Blues. A high kick back towards full forward. Bill should take this. He does. Robert Bill with a chance now. He's kicked one to put the Blues back in front. It's a seesawing game here at Footy Park. Conditions fantastic and a good game of footy. Robert Bill. Towards the golf course in. Kicks accurately, and the Blues are back in front. That's his second. Sturt, 7-7-49, the Dogs, 7-5-47. McGowan with a tremendous amount of pace, but, gee, the Dogs left these players alone. There was three of them up there. They raffled the football. Veal it was who booted his second from a fine kick. Kevin Higgins promised through the press that Sturt would do the hard things this year and do them well. Well, certainly their tackling since the first quarter has been phenomenal and they're putting Centrals under a lot of pressure. 14 scoring shots, the Blues. 12, the Dogs. And it's the Blues by two points as the ball is put down there towards McGowan. It appeared to be Lennon got the handball back. The Blues go forward once more and the mark's been taken by David I. And he's had a little bit of bite since coming onto the ground. Drives that in long, the target up there. Oh, the mark's been taken by Robert Veal again. Well, he's been working extremely hard and effectively in that forward pocket throughout the course of this game. And this would help his confidence no end as he lines up for his third goal. It will be his sixth kick. He's playing a good game with limited opportunities and he's posted his third goal. Robert Ville playing like a very confident footballer. Went up one hand and then completed with both hands. And he's certainly giving uh, David Buckley the run around. And the big thing about uh, Ville is the fact he kicks accurately. And he's now got, uh, well, given the, the uh, double blue players, someone waiting for up forward. A good uh, performance by the double blues. Sturt, 8 7 55. The dog, 7 5 47. Reminds me a lot of John Tilbrook. Sturt would like to think he's going to be as good. Standing and delivering there, old Lena got the fly over the top there. Whittlesey gets it out. Painter, slide of hand, can't find a teammate or can him. Through goes Phil, charges through the half forward line, puts in a long one. The umpire said it is just offline for a point. G. would have that ever lifted the Blues? They're starting to attack the ball, they're moving it well, and they look a far better side early in this uh, second half. 13 minutes gone, and they're leading by nine points. Botka. Elects to kick to the outer side and in fact has run over the line so there'll be a bounce back at the 10 metre mark of the square. I tell you what Kimbo, nothing but nothing going right for the Dogs at the moment and uh, the Blues have taken the initiative. Well the Blues work rate has reached new levels in this third term and they're reaping the, the uh, benefit from that. Chopper Hanley warming up on the boundary line about to come back onto the ground. 
the, uh, his first little stint wasn't all that flash. As the ball is put down in the direction of Sicker Dick, Painter applies the pressure, and there'll be a throw in in the left forward pocket of the southern end of Football Park, where the scoreboard reads 7 5 Central, Sturt 8 8. The action on Nine's Wide World of Sports. This new curly wouldn't be at all pleased with this performance tonight uh, by the dogs. A throw in over the top, ball to ground. Chance now for Renfrey. That's a hurried kick at goal, but it's uh, offline. And again, a point to the double blues. They go to 8 9 57, 10 points in front of the dogs, 7 5 47. We've played just over 14 minutes into this third quarter. Blues have done what the dogs couldn't. That's kick goals into this. Uh, Southern end, which seems to be for some reason the harder end to do it. McAdam kept his balance well, pounding at his needs to sit. Painter worrying him all the way. Oh, he put the saddle on. He's got to get a free kick. But that was good football then by McAdam. He couldn't get the handle, and uh, in the end, Painter pushed him in the back. McAdam from centre wing to put the dogs into attack. He goes short. Oh, I think that's out on the full. Well, the umpire's right on it. Obviously, it wasn't. Lynn has been well. Lynn has been paid the mark. Would have liked to have seen that again, yeah. Daisy. <laughs> to me, it looked like it was over, but the umpire could not have been in a better position. Down goes Ingerson. McCarthy comes out with the ball. Back towards Whittlesey. Takes a strong mark on the half-back line. Sturt run it now to Field. Field will take it out of the, the half-back line. Drives long in towards half-forward. I does it well. Push in the back. The free kick will go to Scott Lee. Better be quick, young David, or you'll lose 50 metres. It's not, it is Schwert. Schwert hugs the boundary line out there looking for Ingus, and he was opposed to three Sturt players. That's a brilliant handball by Whittlesey. Now the pass goes back, and it finds Darren Bauer. Bauer, centre field, or he set up his teammate in Lennon there, and the mark's been completed by the Bulldogs player in Dodger Robertson. Clever player, this man. The handball over to McAdam. Well, he put him under pressure, but he was equal to the occasion. He's a class act, McAdam. As the ball goes out wide now, out there is Walk harassing Minchington. Minchington sweating off. Cleverly tapped back, though, to Richter. Now the Blues have another opportunity. The racehorse in McGowan has the football. Changes direction as if he had swivels in his ankles. Now the kick goes in long. Big leap. Mark not completed. Opportunity for Krieg. The handball to Botka. Let's see if the Dogs can set this up a little more effectively. Long kick goes towards McCarthy, LBW, that one. If you want to see more of that, tune in at 11 o'clock tomorrow for the Shield game between South Australia and Tasmania. But it's the Blues once more. This time it's Sutterby, Simon Sutterby, the boy from Geelong. In fact, played for the Newton Football Club. Clever work by Lena to Painter. Now to field once more. In fact, it's Bauer as he lines up the goals. And he's flipped the centre. Well, this is unbelievable stuff by the double blues. They are really on fire in this third quarter. That was super stuff, the way they worked that ball right out of defence and John Painter. Accurate with either the kick or the handball. And watch this. Beautifully done by the double blues. And he's come straight off the ground, which is certainly a, a fantastic That's O'Keefe. Handball to Painter. And look at this work here. Beautiful stuff on that occasion by the double blues. And they've taken control on this third quarter. Darren Bauer kicks a great goal when he sat in the bunker for a while, but Radbone back on. Obviously, they're changing their overs in the interchange bench at the moment. Well done, Lennon, to keep the ball in the area, but he can't get it out clearly, and the umpire will bounce. 17 and a half minutes gone of the second half, and uh, young Bauer, having kicked his first goal in SA football, just telling the boys how it went through. Looks like I've got a bit of a curve on it. Leonard gets it out. Lennon in. Leonard again. Taken away almost by Painter. Kicked into attack up there on towards the half forward line by Hocking. Richter leaves the ball behind. Quickly in his Burke. Can't get it out clearly. Richter again. Now Russell. Russell puts it up towards Radbone. Intercepted Swert. And he's got the ball check side of centre wing. Kicks the dogs into attack up towards Ingerson. Not a very easy one. Burke gets it out or not effectively. Hocking working hard for the football. Gives it to Handley on the left leg. Up now, here's a chance for Rudy Mandemaker. But in front, it's well taken by McCarthy. And he leaves the, relieves the pressure. McCarthy uses walk for support. Now the ball goes towards the back of the pack. Keith Allen couldn't control it. Whittlesey's having a great third term. The short pass from Burke finds David I. I thought about the handball. 
now has to use his pace, managed to get around Keith Allen. The great pressure that was applied by the big man, and that ball has gone out of bounds on the full. Well, Kenner took Sturt two quarters to kick four goals, yet they've kicked five in 18 and a half minutes in this third term. Yes, and Greg Whittlesey, as you mentioned, Ken's been the driving force behind the double blues. He's been uh, at his scintillating best, Greg Whittlesey. The kick back to centre wing of hands. Whittlesey again tapped it out beautifully on that occasion. Direct, directed a half forward. Mark has been paid. No, stick a appeal for the mark. Swert goes in, lose it. Bill takes it. A chance again for Renfrey. Kicks towards full forward. Bartlett now for the set off the ground with a go. No take possession. question now the Blues are playing exciting football and they're running rings around the dog defence they're starting to panic Bartlett got it out then it was O'Keefe and Radbone from a standing start popped it through high booted his second and Sturt have gone to a three goal plus lead and I think you'll find that they're going to increase upon this the way they're playing Seven five plays ten nine. A remarkable quarter of football by the Double Blues. They've kicked six goals two in a majestic term of football. It was pretty scraggy in that second term, but they clawed their way back to be level. And there's Curls. He wouldn't be pleased about this. Let's not forget there's a lot of money at stake here, as well as the pride. As the crowd gets a bit excited here at Football Park, and once more. We'll have another bounce by umpire Mark Barnett. We've had 20 and a half minutes into this third term. Now, this really puts the pressure on the umpire. Third time lucky. Let's hope it goes straight. He's not going to call that one back, but I don't think it was much better. Garzi a chance. Couldn't capitalise. And the free kick has been awarded to Roger Gurdham. High tackle. The Dogs desperately need a goal. He kicks it long. Amanda Maker, in fact, Minchington, the target, couldn't take the mark. The ball take off, bullet-like hand pass from Whittlesey. Now socket off the ground. The man with the pace should be Richter. He in turn kicks it off the ground as well. Gurdham, clever footwork to get that ball back to Scott Lee. And his short pass finds Chopper Handley. Good mark by Chopper Handley. The Dogs into attack. They trail by 22 points. There you see it in replay. Didn't take his eyes off the ball at all. A fine mark has been taken also here by Ingerson. That was a strong grab by the young man. Centers of football and a good kick and finds Lynn. From the Brisbane Bears player. Been very quiet tonight in his first game for the Dogs. Kick number eight for Tony Lynn. Center half forward going towards the lake end. Lob into the square. Behind Manamaker. Pushes in the back, has he? Yes, he has. That was quite plain to see. Rooney gave the bloke a shove. There it is there. And McCarthy has done a top job. He's been moved on to uh, Mandemaker. Kicks the ball back towards the grandstand side. Ingerson should mark this and does so. Ingerson. A chance now again. Concedes ground. Why I don't know. The angle is a lot straighter, but he's conceded ground. Krieg. Looking for Rudy again with him. McCarthy in it in front. Off hands. Garzi a chance. But uh, kicked off the ground by Kim Russell and threw for a minor score to the Dogs. They go to 7 6 48, Sturt 10 9 69. Into time on. Third quarter, 23 minutes gone almost. Nice looking kick in, goes up towards the centre field all over the top. Handley, that's a fine one grab mark. Can't score from there, I wouldn't think. The Dogs would like some goals in a hurry. They didn't kick any into the breeze. If the breeze is coming from that way before. They've got an uphill task. Mandemaker out on the lead. Second grab. He's got it. Too tall, too strong. And he's got the ball in the right forward pocket. Well, he's had his greatest success from this area. He's booted three already. And two have been from this right forward pocket. Mandemaker from about 30 metres out. Kick number six. The dogs desperately needing a goal. Down by 21 points. Mandemaker from 60 degrees. Oh, that's a nice looking kick. But he slipped it across the face of goal. And now that deficit is 20 points. 
Vandermakers kicked three goals three from his six kicks this evening. The scoreboard 7-7 to 10-9. So the Double Blues leading by 20 points. And as I mentioned before, they did the hard work in the second term to get back into this game. And this quarter's been far more polished. They've managed to kick six goals. The ball goes to the outer side. Mandamaker with the punch. Lena claims the mark, though, and it's been paid. He normally looks to play on quickly. This is no exception. He uses McCarthy, who held back on that kick, searching for number four. There's the big chap in Frank Burke, called to play on. Back to Kim Russell. He has a fumble, needs support. He goes, concedes ground to Lena, who also has a fumble. It's starting to look a bit slippery out there. He's well tackled. They're in a bit of strife now. Well, that, gee, the free kick's going back to Creek. But they had the advantage when Gurdham had the football. Kick number 12 coming up for Peter Krieg. Not happy with the movement, decides to go long. Mandamaker there, front position, couldn't take it. Lynn searching for the crumbs. The tackle was high, and we'll have a bounce about 30 metres out from the central goal. Well, this could be the first upset of the season. If the Double Blues can beat the Bulldogs, they lead by 20 points in the time on in the third quarter. This would give the Sturt supporters some hope. I know it's only early days. Big Rudy has the 40, but it's a free kick. Against the Dogs, he's kicked the goal too. But the free kick has been paid. Against Anthony Ingerson for shepherding. And by Mark Mackey officiating in his 100th game tonight. Talking to Anthony Ingerson, but the free kick to Leonard. He goes short to Sutterby. Sutterby runs around. Gurdon breaks the tackle. Almost got caught. Ball to ground. Pull back on that occasion by Sturt. Allows Swart in with the football from the centre of the ground towards centre half forward again. Oh, Lena should have taken them up. But it goes off hands to Russell. Russell towards half forward, looking for O'Keefe. Goes up one hand wide. I don't know, but it's good enough to recover. Well, he's well tackled. It's a superb tackle on that occasion. Well played by the Dogs to keep the ball in the area. That occasion was Scott Lee. It's Renfrey again into the pocket. It goes off. Botker over the top. It's heavy work at the moment. Veal now. Has the football into the pocket by the scoreboard. Hooks it back, a high ball. Back towards centre half forward. O'Keefe couldn't complete the second attempt. I with the football. A chance now for Painter. He'll use the footy. Looking for Mc McCown. And McCown takes the mark. And it's been paid. Top mark from a little man. Siren sounds. Kick stands. Whatever. Sturt will go to the three-quarter time break with at least a three-goal lead. At the moment, they're 20 points in front. Kick number 10 to McGowan. From 35 metres out, he slipped it across the freight front, and it's a 21-point advantage to Sturt. So at three-quarter time, the scoreboard reads Central 7-7-49. The Blues 10 goals, 10, 70 points. Plenty of action here at Football Park, and there you see it quarter by quarter. And the three quarter time is the Double Blues 10 10 70, leading the Bulldogs 7 7 49 a margin of 21 points. And uh, they certainly have played particularly well. Mandamaker has kicked three for the Dogs and for Sturt, Ville three, and Redbone two. David Mackay, David, a great quarter by the Double Blues, and uh, I thought Whittlesey was the, the big difference in the two sides in that particular quarter. I think you're right, KG, but the good thing about Sturt, or so it appears tonight, is that they're not just relying on one player. I've been, had, I've had the opportunity of watching Sturt train three or four times this year, and they've been doing a lot of competitive work. It really is showing tonight. They're very, very competitive around the ground. Their uh, desperation at the ball. All the old cliches I know are true, but Kevin Higgins has really turned them, I think, from a very unfit side last year. I think that was part of their problem. They appear already at this stage of the year very, very fit. Curley, on the other hand, KG, I don't think he'll be too perturbed. You might recall this time last year they weren't travelling too well, the Bulldogs. In fact, they got a drubbing in one of the uh, night games here at uh, Football Park. I've just been absolutely uh, deafened by a spectator behind me. <laughs> Sorry about that, KG. Good things about live football. Well, I'll tell you what, David, Neil Curley wouldn't be at all pleased because I, I really believe since quarter time the urgency has gone out of the, uh, out of the Bulldogs game. And there you see, Curls, very, very pensive and very aggro at the moment. 
Yeah, but uh, Kate, gee, I wouldn't get too carried away with that. Remember, they've got Jonas to come back, and I'm told by a couple of very loyal central supporters that he's lighter than he's been for the last three or four years, and that includes his time in Melbourne. They've got Greg Smith to come back, Van Dommel to come back, Pryor to come back. There's a lot of experience there, and they seem to be breaking down in their attack across half-back, driving the ball forward to Rudy Mandemaker. So when you're missing those sorts of players in a game like this, it is difficult. I think Girls is just having a good look at some of the young guys. The boy, uh, Lynn, from uh, the Brisbane Bears, he doesn't look particularly fit. He's recovering from a knee injury. They've got all those sorts of little things. So it's early days yet. I wouldn't read too much into this. Yeah, I just wondered, David, whether, whether or not uh, perhaps the Bulldog players uh, look for Rudy Mandemaker on too many occasions rather than when they are within kicking distance, kick the goal. No doubt about that, uh, KG, but uh, a guy who can kick over 100 goals in a year, why wouldn't you look for him? He really has to be their focal point. I think you mentioned it during the commentary. They rely so very heavily on him. If they're going to have a good year, they really need him firing. But the good thing is that uh, Tony Ingerson, it really appears to be coming on this year. He's improving. He's kicking for goal, really is still letting him down, but he is finding the ball. He's got very good hands, good mark. If they can start to use him across that centre-half forward area and work around him in a two-prong attack, I think Central could still be potent. And David, a boy we mentioned at, at half-time, Mark O'Keefe at, at centre-half forward, he, uh, he continued the good form in the third quarter, and he could be a real big fine for the Double Blues. I think he will be. He's uh, playing on a Western Australian state player and beating him, in my opinion, at this stage. Uh, he's played in four premiership sides down in the Geelong uh, region, Warrnambool he comes from, so he's used to success. He's a successful player, he comes from a successful team, and there's another guy to watch, uh, Frank Burke. He plays on a half-back flank, redhead player number four, played with Richmond, came from Bendigo this year. I've seen him trial in about three or four internal trials for the Double Blues. By G makes all his opposition earn their kicks. You, you won't see him as a spectacular player, but you watch him during the year. Very dour, very uh, very concentrated defender. Good on you, David. That's David Mackay. No doubt the Sturt supporters a big smile on their face at three-quarter time as we take you back to our callers, Ian Day and also Kim Dillon. Thanks, Ken. Yes, uh, the Dogs have taken Peter Krieg off the turf. Whether he's injured, he seems to be playing pretty well. But Curley making moves, he's desperate to win this one. Everyone seems to be looking in the wrong direction other than the football. At the bounce, the final quarter of the first round of the Foundation Cup for these two teams. Robertson searches for the football, can't pick it up, and the umpire will re-ball it up. 10-10 to 7-7. Six goal quarter for Sturt, and three to the Dogs in that quarter. But as I've mentioned before, Centrals couldn't kick a goal into the breeze in the second quarter. Once again, we see a line ball with Pyman and Whittlesey and another bounce by the umpire. Yes, Pyman's found hard touch, touch is hard to get today. Umpires Mark Mackey and Mark Barnett. In fact, he's only had one kick and uh, he played some very good games in the reserves last season. And he'd be looking to consolidate into the seniors this year, but uh, hasn't been a big night tonight. As the dogs go forward through Buckley, Schwert, in fact, it was. Now an opportunity for Richter. I like the way he plays his football, Johnny Richter. The free kick will be back for Sturt and it will be taken by Walk, who goes across ground immediately out there looking for Lennon, who appears to be playing in defence now. And it's a long, sweeping handball out wide to find McGowan. Balked with the dummies, very quick. One of the quickest players in league football. And the pass is good as well to find Burke. Burke drives it in. Longer goal here. It certainly makes things difficult for the Dogs. But a free kick has been awarded to the central side and it will go the way of O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan gives the handball out wide to Sikadik. Dogs trying to work the ball out of defence. It's Pyman. Back towards centre wing. It's not a good kick. Looking for Hocking. He's been rather quiet tonight. You tell me his form on the track's been outstanding, but uh, sadly his form tonight hasn't been what the, he would have liked. But 12 possessions for the game so far. Only throw in, not enough for a Rovers. We see Reynolds, Allen, both players using the body. Finally, it was Reynolds. Chance now for Chaplin, who's also been very quiet. Towards centre half forward, Zolt Sturt back in defence here. And a fine mark by McCarthy. Gee, I've been impressed with this lad's performance tonight. If he can stay sound, he's going to be a useful player for the Blues, that is for sure. Free kick, yes. Picked up superbly. Not occasion by the umpire, Mark Barnett. Whittlesey, the man who. Uh, had a scintillating third quarter. Kicks towards half forward. Veal, strike me peak. This bloke's come from nowhere tonight. Fair nick and he has. Kick number eight. And he's certainly been a focal point up forward. Robert Veal. Kicking towards the lake end. Good, good grab. Good strong grab. Robert Veal. Long kick. It'll get the distance. Will it get the accuracy? I think he has. Strike me peak. He's bottled. It's hard. Gee, the dogs have got a problem now. 
a strong mark by Veal, who appears to become even stronger around the top there. As I mentioned, he reminds me a lot of John Tilbrook, but that was a fine grab. They're playing him out of the forward pocket, and four goals to boot. It's been a fine performance by this young man. As I can remember watching Diamond Jim Trillbrook at Unley Oval one day when he kicked seven goals against the Eagles. He was a powerful man. And uh, Sturter looking pretty powerful as well as Whittlesey tried to crash his way through. The ball back towards Hanley. Couldn't grab the football. And eventually we'll have a bounce centre field. We've had three and a half minutes of the final term. 7-7 seven, seven plays 11-10. And the Blues looking well and truly in control here. That football park. The late game of the double header. This is now tapped out towards Hanley. Kicks around his body. Ingerson couldn't grab the football. It's now worked out towards Sutterby. He goes for the open spaces. In fact, he'll have to chase the football himself. Hanley kicks that off the ground and gained about five metres for his side. So we'll have a throw in once more. And can I think the Bulldogs are going to find it very difficult to get back here. They trail by four goals three. And... Uh, they need someone to set them alight, and there doesn't seem to be anyone there at the moment capable. No, they need a, a big effort from uh, Gilbert McAdam. Kim, he's the only man that can uh, be the driving force. But Scott Lee paddles the ball in front of him. Renfrey for the Blues is in there. So is Painter. Players working hard. Chapman. He has scrammy stuff at the moment. It's Kim Russell being knocked off the footy. And surely the umpire will call for a bounce. He does. Umpire Mark Mackey. Four and a half minutes into the final term. Sturt 11 10 76 the dogs 7 7 49 and it's taken an enormous effort for the dogs to get back into this game from here Reynolds Ingerson Lynn Chapman has a chance now Chapman kicks towards goal don't tell me he's missed strike me pinky has well you can't afford to miss those opportunities if you expect to win this game of footy down 27 points you've got to kick those goals at five minutes into the final term 11-10, the dog 7-8. Yes, the dog Rovers haven't done a lot this evening. And Gerdham and, uh, and Krieg were the two players pushing the ball forward, but of course Krieg's in the bunker. McGowan kicks long to the half-forward line. Up goes O'Keefe, butters up again. Oh, beautifully done. That's probably a throw, Redbone. Got it across to O'Keefe. I doubt whether a second hand ever got near that. But it looked like a scoop, but the umpire didn't see it. So that's all that counts. So throw in on the half-forward right flank, 11-10 to 7-8. Sturt into attack again. Another goal could almost clinch it for them. And wouldn't it be a fairy tale beginning to South Australian football to coach Kevin Higgins? Although we all know that one swallow doesn't make a summer, it'd certainly make a nice opening. Gurdham. Back to uh, Lee. Swert can't keep it in play out of position or out of play at the same spot. We're five and a half minutes into the final term. Central 7-8-50, trailing Sturt 11-10-76, a 26-point advantage to the Blues. The action on nine's wide world of sports. This is the man they need to fire, Gilbert McAdam, but uh, that's not what you call firing. He kicked it straight out towards Russell. Mark not paid there. Great defence by Richter. Now Whittlesey crashes his way through. The handball goes over towards David I Uses his pace, straightens the body. Lennon up there, he's playing a full forward at the moment, applies the tackle, play on the call. Veals worked very well out of that forward pocket tonight. It goes back to Scott Field, and he's missed. And Robert Veal, Ken, we've mentioned the fact that he's kicked four goals, but he's played in a hand a hand in about three others tonight out of that forward pocket. Yeah, Scotty Field should have bottled that, Kim, and that would have been the centre for the, uh, the double blues. But you're right, Veal has played, uh, as I mentioned earlier, played uh, a very good game out of the pocket. Botka with the kickoff decides to go to the outer side. Reynolds is his tuck. He's pushed under the football. Ball to ground. Painter. A high ball. Doesn't cover much territory. Dumped away by Chopper Hanley. Veal again in the action. Then there is second deck. He's busted off the football. Supported by Chopper Hanley. Kicks towards centre half forward. But a good mark has been taken on this occasion by Bartlett. In defence now. Started a full forward. Now playing in defence. Kicks back towards centre wing. Oh, almost a magnificent diving mark by Scotty Field. Working hard with Sikadek, but left the footy behind. In goes Burke, in goes Sikadek. Almost a clash of heads, McAdam to Lynn. He's been a quiet player. Oh, hocking a beautiful mark, diving mark at half forward. The dog's into attack. Centres the football, Gertham's his target and finds him. Oh, got players running everywhere here. Here's a chance now for the dog to the end. He shouldn't miss this. He should kick a goal. If he does, it's home. 
Well done, Swert. Certainly, Sturt were very loose then. There was a lot of players running around. Swert came down from centre wing, kick number 11. He straightened, put it through low, and that's the first one that they've got into the breeze, that end. Certainly, the dogs are not down, or they're down, but they're not out. 8-8 to 11-11, and we've got a crowd of nearly 11,000 people here. There's 10,498 people here at Football Park as Scott Field leads the arena. He's suffering severe leg cramps. Onto the ground is Darren Bauer, who kicked a goal in the third term before being removed. The ball goes forward. The dogs into attack once more. This would have to be their last-ditch effort. They need a few quick goals. McCarthy on the outer side. He's been an incredibly good player this evening. After starting the game at centre-half back initially, he was moved to full-back and has played a tremendous game. McGowan's got better as the game's progressed. Off-hands, beautifully taken there by Renfrey. Frank Renfrey gets around onto the right boot, drives it in long, looking for Lennon, punched away by Botka, and he's found the safety of the boundary line on that outer side. He does. He's made the, the comment of the night. The dogs certainly haven't had any rovers tonight. Lynn's been quiet. Hocking's been quiet. I haven't sighted Chapman. And that's the area they were they were quiet uh, in last year. So uh, let's hope for their sake. And Garzi, who came on for a brief moment. So they're struggling in the roving division tonight. Very much so. Thumped away by O'Sullivan. Laird with a long handball out to uh, McAdam. The squirt. Who kick Central's last goal. Back towards centre wing. Well, almost a good mark by Warp. Put his body. Lynn goes in. Heavy body work at the moment. And umpire Mark Mackey will call for a bounce at centre wing out of side. Nine and a half minutes in. And there you see the, the Bulldog bunker. Not happy at all. Total attendance, 10,498. Ten minutes into the final term. Sturt 11, 11, 77. The Dogs 8, 8, 56. Half forward line. Andley should get a free kick. He does. He was grabbed. He'll send the Dogs into attack. They're certainly not out of it, only 21 points the difference. Kick number 12 to Handley. Hooks it towards the half forward line, hocking out in front over the top. Richter, fine mark, slips it out. Here's a chance for a keeper if he gets it. Not a keep, that was Burke. Hocking back in there, going through nicely is David I. Looking for someone to pass off to, can't find anyone. Finally just kicks long, big leap, Lennon over the top, can't bring it down. Back in defence. It's O'Sullivan who gets it back out now to Gilbert McAdam, and he's got the ball right on the defensive corner of the big centre square. Peter Craig is coming back onto the turf, so obviously he's not injured. Unusual move by Curley to take him off the ground when he's playing so well. Burke tries to get the ball out. The umpire's going to give a free kick. It's going the way of Hocking. Hocking half forward line into McAdam. McAdam not clear. He'll have to go back and kick long. Now he sets up the handball, centre field taken by Allen, hooked around or oh, higher than longer, up towards the half forward line, in there's Lynn with him, he's swerved, oh, he's coming out for the football he's paid the mark and he's some 45 50 metres out from goal, well he kicked their last one, they'd like him to kick another one right now, oh man to make it with a set, oh big mark Rudy, oh got up over the top, he's come right down on that toxic bone, and that hurts have a look at him come down, oh that does hurt as I can tell you but Mandamaker has taken a huge mark, 20 metres out in front, and he's got a chance to boot his fourth, and this will certainly give the dogs some confidence. Hey, Daisy, where's the coccyx bone? The coccyx right at the base of your spine. No, Ken, haven't you ever slipped on that and fallen on it? <laughs> no. Mandamaker from 20 metres out, pop through, goal number four, and the dogs are back in the fight. They certainly are. They only trail by three goals, three. That's two goals, three. Now, let's have a look at that mark one more time. Paul McCarthy had to sit there. He could do nothing else. And Mandamaker, he was up there high, eyes on the ball. Landed a little awkwardly, but he won't mind. He's posted his fourth goal. So at the 12 and a half minute mark, it's 9-8 to 11-11. And the dogs are fighting back in what's turning out to be a pretty good game of football. Yes, the bounce down, thumped away, taken by Walker. Good game of footy on our hands here at Football Park. Lee coming out. Radbone is there. Gee, he's quick, this kid. Goes without the footy, then goes back. But he's being held without the footy. And uh, Rickley will take the free kick. The double blues will go into attack. They lead by 15 points, 13 minutes into the final term. Kick towards centre-half forward. 
Looking for O'Keefe over the top of that player's head. Hocking comes out. Oh, a chop for Hanley. Nest him up. A chance now for Bauer from point blank range. Is this a centre? It could be. That's his second. A very important goal to the double blue. Oh, what a mistake by the dog fence. Defence. I think Curley would have steam coming out of his ears. You don't see it there. It was the play before Bauer got hold of the ball. But it should have been just a routine handball and play out of defence. They lost control of the football. Bauer came through, used his goal. Now, have a look at this. They just lost the football. There was two of them that could have picked it up. Bauer through, goal number two, and Sturter got a huge chance here tonight. Well, I wouldn't say it's the ball game yet. They lead by three goals, three. We've only had 13 and a half minutes, so there's plenty of time left remaining in this game. As the dogs go forward once more, Ingerson with an opportunity. Picks it up well for a big man. Got of the way towards Pyman. He's been quiet, but he lines up the goals. And with his third kick, he's offline for a minor score. The dogs move on to 9-9-63, trailing Sturt 12-11-83, a 20-point advantage to the Blues. Kick comes towards the grandstand side. Leaning up high, couldn't take the mark. Bartlett with the crumbs towards centre wing he goes. There's a chance now for Sikadek with him as I. Sikadek around the body. Looking for Hocking, but the ball goes out of play. Burke coming onto the ground. Coming up, of course, on nine coast to coast. Whatever you do, folks, don't miss it. Right after the footy. The throw in. Taken by O'Sullivan. Back towards centre half forward, McCadden went up high, off hand, Flinnett will get the uh, the footy. Weaves out of trouble then, the handball's almost smothered. Comes the way of Richter, who's played a terrific game tonight. Goes right across the face of goal, looking for McCarthy. Lynn is there, but the ball will beat both those players out of play. It's into the forward pocket. The dogs into attack. Sturt lead by 20 points on nine's wide world of sports. Lenat back in defence for the Blues. With him is going to be Mandemaker at the throw-in. Lenat gets the tap away. Finds McGowan. Concedes it back. Here's a chance now for Renfrey to kick in towards centre wing. But it's dropping short and taken by McAdam. He drops it over now. Here's a chance Ingerson. Ingerson can't get it clear. Going in hard was Warp. Lost the footy. They go in really hard. Bow goes down. And the umpire's going to give him a free kick. He's booted two goals. Fine performance, Richter, has he ever played well? Drives long, quickly in there now is Radbone, centre wing, the Blues into attack again, kicking long, up towards O'Keefe, great mark, he's going to play on, heads towards the goal, puts it on its way, gives it a chance, and it's goal! Well, that will make it very difficult now for the uh, Bulldog side, a magnificent effort, the ball was sent in long by Radbone, and look at that by O'Keefe. He took the mark, he took off, and with kick number six, he banged through his second goal, a magnificent shot on the run, and the Blues are looking pretty sharp. They're on 13-11 to the Dogs, nine goals, nine, and we've had 16 and a half minutes of the final term, and O'Keefe has got better as the game's worn on. The, the bounce down with the football, starting to attack again up towards full forward a chance for Lennon around his body, don't jump he's kicked it, strike me Pete nothing but nothing is going wrong for the Blues tonight, they are absolutely on fire, and look at Kevin Higgins he's, he's packed the smile at long last well, that's great stuff here we see it in replay but I, with the football, not a good kick up towards full forward, but Lennon takes it beautifully around his body, kick number 8 and bang says thank you very much and that is daisy i believe the ball game game set and match ken and can i say sturt has thoroughly deserved it they've worked extremely hard i'm not sure whether it was you graham or kim used the word persistence but that's what it's been they've kept on nagging away creek back in the, the game now drives up towards the half forward line lynn can't russell likewise taken away by bartlett not a good handball richter through g's played well as the ball comes back now to sutterby sutterby kicks third into attack up to it keep again he can't bring this one down but will he has got it half forward line kick number 10 going in high up towards lennon fisted away from botka renfrey around the corner coming back but not far enough in fact in the end it went away further and uh, i'm getting excited too out of bounds on the full Sturt leading by plenty. Yes, there's no question the Sturt boys won't want this game to finish. They're enjoying it out there. They found their feet. 
They're playing with good teamwork now. They had to work hard and struggle early, but uh, they worked at their game, and it's paying off now as Krieg puts his side forward once more. The Bulldog captain with a long penetrating kick. It's only to be held up by Kim Russell as he surges back into attack. The ball's put out towards Radbone. Couldn't take it. He's pretty quick, though, this fellow. They won't catch him. Oh, yes, they did. And it was on a big tap in Sikadik. Magnificent effort. Oh, tremendous effort by Sikadik. That was incredible. Oh, big man, Kimbo. I think it was the last gasp of a dying man, though. I think he just threw out a hand and it happened to stick. Well, after I said that, I was hoping you wouldn't catch him, and he <laughs> bloody did. I was, hoping, I was hoping he did a kick that occasion by Painter up towards full forward, over the top of the pack, and through for a minor score. So the Dogs 9-9, 63, 18 and a half minutes gone in the final term. Sturt, go to 14-12, 96. Botka will bring the ball back into play to the outer side. Good mark, I keep again. In fact, it was Burke, sorry, my apologies. And Renfrey is the player who's got the mark now. Renfrey going towards the lake end. The attendance, 10,498. And do you think the Sturt supporters wouldn't be smiling tonight? Kick number eight for Renfrey. I'll sleep well tonight, the Sturt supporters, that is for sure. Renfrey will get the distance, but the accuracy horribly astray. And only a minor score. 14 13 97, the Dogs 9 9 63. Almost 20 minutes gone of the final quarter, possibly at five or six minutes. The Dogs are going to have to work extremely hard, but they're almost six goals down. I don't know what they can do to get out of here or we'll get out of this, especially with Sturt playing so well. O'Keefe. Laird forces the ball back, Russell through, Sturt into attack again, up towards full forward, Lennon standing his ground, with him there however is Sikadek, and he's forced over the line, Lennon still in with the chance, but no, the umpire's ruled the ball is out of play, it's a throw in about 25 metres around, 14, 13 to 9, 9, disappointing for the dog supporters, but as the boys said, Sturt supporters will be smiling after this fine performance. Once again, another bounce in the right forward pocket, stirred in attack. Well, Curls was quoted as saying through the week, there's newfound team spirit out at Elizabeth. Well, I think it's been dented tonight. They'll have to, uh, yes, they certainly have to dig deep to find some more of that as Painter hits the post. And uh, he can normally kick those. He's a great player to watch, Jack Painter, and has been for about 10 seasons now. He is a star, John Painter. Value for touches. Tell you what, uh girls would be breathing fire at the moment. I'd like to be a fly on the wall when he talks to his players after the game. The kickoff, thumped away, ball to ground, a chance for Veal, tackle, the handball away, Gerdham, Lee, McAdam, this is better movement by the dogs, but far too late, she cried. Coffee, up towards ten and a half, four, he had a quiet night, Coffee, that's for sure. Thumped away by Rick, this bloke hasn't had a quiet night, he's played superbly. Goes to Burke, out to McGowan. Over to uh, Bartlett, who started at full forward, now in defence. Doesn't find the player he's aiming for. Sullivan. The dogs again moving it out. Swert. McAdam. In towards the centre of the ground, looking out there for Gertham and finds that player. Gertham sends the dogs into attack, but it's a tumble punt kick, not a good one. Richter is as good as any Sturt player with Payton, Painter and Whittleson. G's played well. Here's a chance now. Handley smothered off the boot. Gertham stands his ground but loses a football. Quickly in there, 15 was Llewellyn back on the turf. Bauer around the corner to the half forward line. A real big chance here for Sturt to go in now. If they can pick it up, Renfrey on the left leg. Fires in high up towards the half forward line. Good mark there taken by O'Keefe. And he's been a fine player in this second half. Plays on quickly. One on one. Lennon can't bring it down. With him is Butker. And the ball is rushed across for another minor score. It doesn't matter to Sturt. They've got the game parceled up. We're into time on. They lead by plenty and could not possibly lose from here. No question of that, Daisy. 14-15 plays 9-9. It's been a polished performance by the Double Blues. In a tremendous second half. Sikadik with the football. He's had all summer to recover from that nasty blow he received uh, against Norwood during the final series last year. Out towards Buckley. Buckley one way, then the other. Been a quiet player. 
Sits the ball up high. Buckley's had three kicks, in fact. Bartlett couldn't control it. McAdam has it now. He puts the handball out in front of Schwert, allowing him to run to the football. They've conceded ground. Now the handball goes back out towards Krieg as he skirts the boundary line. He chips out a pass. Play on the cool. Man to make a looking for a free kick. Richter in there once more. Gets the handball back out towards McCarthy. They have some space to work in on the outer side. Kimmy Russell out of defence. Looking for some movement downfield. Centres the ball back. Oh, there's a mark nearly taken there by Llewellyn. Couldn't control it. The handball in turn now goes out towards Pyman. Pyman pushes the ball to the forward pocket. But a great mark in defence taken there by Bowman once more and now it's with number 18 and that's Frank Renfrey. Renfrey towards centre wing looking out there for Whittlesey. Whittlesey takes almost takes the mark. Pyman put pressure on him but uh, Whittlesey again takes possession towards centre half forward it goes off hands. Veal out towards those keep it's heavy body work at the moment and umpire Barnett will call for a bounce down. At centre half forward for the double blues. Almost 24 minutes gone in the final term here. The Dogs 9-9, Sturt 14-15, a great performance by the Double Blues. The bounce down, Coffey. Beal again with a chance, been a good player to Renfrey. The ball doesn't hit the body, but he's good enough to get it back the second time. Taken by Berg, oh, loose player in Ratbone, Ratbone. Will bound away in towards goal. Can he kick it? It's home, that's goal number three to Ratbone. Well has simply run the dogs off their legs all four of them and uh, that was a brilliant performance there by big Frank Burke from South Bendigo just to tip the ball over they've used the ball extremely well and once they get it clear they know how to run it they've had too much pace for the dogs and generally speaking they've worked a lot harder and they've thoroughly deserved their seven goal win I get the feeling there'll be a lot more blues supporters here the next time Sturt enter the playing arena Tonight's effort has given them new hope as the ball socket out towards uh, McGowan. It's picked up strongly, though, by Richter crashing his way through. In there working hard was Krieg. He couldn't take it. Leonard applies a tackle to Coffey. Krieg gets the kick away out wide. Hocking couldn't take the mark. McGowan's been a superstar in the second half. The handball goes back towards Frank Burke. He's getting a bit tired. There's the siren to end the game. A tremendous second half by the Blues. They're victorious, 15-15, The Dogs, 9-9-63. A disappointing performance. And, Ian, it looked as though it would be a close game up to half-time, but that wasn't to be. Well, it just goes to show you, we've seen seven or eight new faces for the Blues tonight. And uh, some of them we've never even heard of before. But, gee, they've played well. I like that O'Keefe at centre-half forward. Burke, as you mentioned, Keith, um, uh, Kim, came into the game strongly in the second half. And I like young um, young Bart when he went in defence. He seemed to be a better player for it. But all in all, a wonderful first up performance by the Blues. And congratulations to Kevin Higgins. It must give him great heart in his first coaching stint in South Australia. And there's the man there going onto the ground to meet his players. The final score, Sturt 15-15, 105. The Dogs 9-9-63. Coming up, coast to coast. It doesn't say here. It doesn't say it at all. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can see. It. Is, it, is, is that out? Yeah. This is out. Is that out? So it's, yeah. it scores here. Yeah. Fifteen. Okay. Two points.
Welcome back to Football Park, and there you see the prize money. Of course, in the Foundation Cup, first prize 30,000, second prize 20,000, and so it goes down, third 15,000, fourth prize 10,000, fifth through to tenth, eight and a half thousand dollars. And certainly, uh, the Cubs could do with that money. The final score, there you see it, quarter by quarter, with the upset of the night, the Double Blues eventually winning 15 15 105 for the Bulldogs, 9 9 63. A fantastic performance by the Double Blues, the main goal kickers. Robbie Bill kicked four, played well up forward, Radbone three, two each to Bauer and O'Keefe, and of course Mandamaker kicking four for the Dogs. Well, a fantastic performance, of course, uh, by the Double Blues today, winning uh, that game against the Bulldogs. Let's go back now to game one, of course, the early game between Glenelg and West Adelaide, and certainly a fantastic performance by uh, both sides, a very entertaining game of football, quarter by quarter. You see the Tigers there, the final result, Glenelg 13-15-93, defeating the Bloods 12 goals, 10 only two, but the Bloods were indeed very, very impressive. OK, hope you've enjoyed our coverage, of course, of uh, the opening of the Foundation Cup. Look forward to having your company again on Monday night. To be a good game, Woodville taking on West Town. Stand by now for Coast to Coast. This has been another presentation from Nine's Wide World of Sports.